That Catalyst really tearing that Reaper to shreds. Is there a revive? Oh, blue team, I do not think coordinating this team fight very well. They were not well prepared for this. Can that revival come through? It's a, it's the res trait from Mesmer that should allow this to happen. We do have the heal skill. More players moving in. I think they've got to commit to this res. There's the Guardian res trait activating as well. Can they get it? Oh, they actually do get it, but I think the Guard's going to die. They have a kill, though, on the enemy Reaper. Can they win this cleave? I think Crafty K can. There's the rally. A massive team fight here. I think Blue are going to get away with this. Yes, they do. It was a bit scuffed, a bit disorganized, but they've managed to actually rally. Um, wow, nerves of steel from the blue team, and they seal it. And just 10 points ahead run it. Ooh, hang on, though. Can the Solbies contest? All right, gamers. It's time for the monthly. Let's see if this is going to be as exciting as the last one. Let's get in there. Let's check out who's playing. Let's see who's who. Here we go. Wait, I can't even get in. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Angels of Blizzard. We have Draza's team. Let's see, actually. Oh, no, I actually can't join any of them yet. We've got Pain. Actually, that'll be an interesting team, too. Oh, yeah. Let's see what we've got. Ah, yeah, we got some pretty beast teams here, actually. Uh, this looks like a pug team here on this side, but we actually have Cole Summers playing. Floor, Oki, Bloodlust, which I believe is Pain. Uh, Bloodlust with all of the O's replaced by X's. Anyway, who is this individual, actually? Who is this uh, player? Oh, no, wait, never mind. Wait, who's Bloodlust? Oh, no, Bloodlust is um, Ioni, actually. No, I got that wrong. Yeah, this is Pain, and uh, this is Ioni, a.k.a. Digitail. On the spec with the double thief, double untamed spellbreaker setup. Very interesting. Let's see what Draza is going with in just a moment. Ah, Belzadar team as well. Very exciting. Okay. So on the red team here, this is also a good team. We have Belzadar, Baxter, Zenvo, uh, No, also known as Chocolate here on the Condi Reaper, I think. Yeah, that's going to be the Condi Reaper as you can see here. This build, by the way, is really fun. It's actually such a disgusting build, but amazing for ranked. A really good kind of 1vx carry build, in my opinion, for ranked. And then we also have Margot, which is Melancholy Symphony. Wow, a bit of a RP name there, but we like that. That's good. Let's see what else we have here. What other teams are currently enabled? Stealing your gizmo. Gizmo robbery. Okay, now that's exciting. What is this? Okay. <laughs> Whenever I see this guy, I, yeah, this is Josh, right? Yeah. Whenever I see this guy, I can't help but be a little bit amused, guys. His name is just You Are Delusional. We have Dexter's here on the Catalyst. We have the Blade Sworn here, Skog X, and Can't Switch on the Core Guard. And this is actually something to look at here as well, by the way. So, Tempest got nerfed a little bit last patch. Basically, you don't have 100% uptime on uh, Stoneheart anymore. Oh, yeah, this is a kind of a. Kind of a meme Tempest, but I can't really show off the real Tempest build, but never mind. You don't get 100% uptime of not getting critically struck anymore uh, when you are in Earth Attunement. It actually has a duration limiter on it. And this has actually kind of meant that people are now playing a little bit of Core Guard and a little bit of Tempest. We actually might see a mixture of supports here. The meta in general is actually very flexible. I think we actually might end up seeing somewhat varied compositions uh, throughout this tournament with different teams trying different approaches to the game. Because there actually are a lot of options and a lot of different ways that you you could actually build out your team uh, in this case and have some pretty different uh, different strategies, I think, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. But anyway, we'll take a look at some of the stuff later on. But let's go and check out some of these other teams. A lot of these games here might be relatively straightforward here, uh, actually, but we'll see. Uh, let's see. Is this a good team? I think this actually might be a sold team as well. You can see they have uh, meme names, right? And that is indicating to me uh, that they have probably quite experienced PvP players. Buff Hollow, for fuck's sake, Irene Net. Nice. I'm definitely a Hollow Smith fan here uh, on this one. Okay, uh, definitely a you know Hollow fan there. Top DPS enjoyer on the core guard, actually. Core DPS guard, by the looks of this, as opposed to the support, which is definitely an interesting choice. Then, of course, the usual catalyst. And Virtuoso. You know, Virtuoso is actually one of the most annoying builds in the game to play against. Remove Virtuoso from the game. Big. True story right there. Oh, Enigma's team. This will be, actually, the Enigma team here. Let's see what we've got. Ah, yes, here we are. Ah, yeah, now this is a team, actually. Yeah, here we go. So we have Enigma on the support guard, and we have Fly. Oh, this is a beast team, actually. Fly on the Daredevil. We have Xeon on Untamed. Very nice. Demolish here on Bladesworn, and Rip on the Power Chrono. I think it's going to be from Rip. Yeah, it's going to be the Power Chrono monster. 
from Rip. Yeah, this is definitely a contender. Of course, Demolish won his first monthly uh, last month, actually. And yeah, that's right, guys. Bladesworn, this is not a troll pick. This is not a miss pick. In fact, Bladesworn has kind of made its way back into the meta with a few changes. Of course, it has a lot more range now on that gun saber uh, as well. A few changes to its sustain as well. And of course, just the meta shifting with buffs and nerfs happening to other builds have actually seen Bladesworn creep back into the meta game. Yeah, Bladesworn actually a powerful build right now that I do expect to see play throughout this tournament. So, hey, CMC was right. It actually is remarkable. You know, like, I, I don't want to be too much of a CMC simp. Honestly, who isn't a CMC simp at this point? But he's actually done a remarkably good job of actually understanding what will end up being good by making a few of these changes and has actually crafted a very diverse meta in PvP. I have to say, I, I know I'm a definitely a big fan of CMC and his approach to designing the game. But even I actually somewhat underestimated how efficient his changes were to some of these builds. Uh, they He's done a very, very good job actually, guys, uh, in making PvP better. I've been playing a fair bit of PvP recently, and I'm not going to lie, it's actually kind of good, right? Which is weird to say, because I'm... Over the past kind of six months, I've viewed PvP as unbelievably putrid and quite frustrating to play. But I've got to say, actually, right now, it's a good time to try PvP if you've been thinking about the game mode for a while. It really is. Now, I think someone told me about this Mamaya's team. So let's go take a look at that. That's not open yet, so let's look at Draza in that case. This will be a French team, of course. So let's see what we've got here. Oh, actually... Uh, yeah, it is going to be Draza. Ah, okay. Let's see what we've got here, then. So this is going to be Draza here on the catalyst with one dodge moan oh interesting condition herald actually this is a build that cmc has been pushing for the game has been pushing to consistently balance it. i'm not sure if we'll see misha play this the whole way but we'll see definitely a monstrous team fight presence but quite slow quite immobile is this build but it really blasts if you let it if it sits in these team fights for a long time it will pretty much bunker bust through just about anything especially core guardians this build melts core guards but it's going to be misha here on this core, uh, the core, the core, Condi Herald. Here, making its way back in with a rabbit amulet and rune of ore. Juvenile Menace Wolf Spider. Here we go on the untamed build. Maya on Spectre. Thief very much in the meta right now. Either Daredevil. Daredevil and Spectre are both good. Even Deadeye actually does see some play. Not as much though. There's a bit too... It's quite a lot of projectile destruction in the meta right now. Which leads to uh, projectile based builds having some difficulty sometimes. And Frey on the Tempest. Still going to be the Tempest this time for Frey. Have seen Frey experiment with Core Guard. So we could potentially see that at some point. But of course, a lot of stability application. Of course, the Super Speed and Immobilize cleanse is very powerful. Immobilize is really a condition that you have to watch out for uh, in the current meta right now. So you've got to be careful. Utilizing Feel the Burn alongside Elemental, Bastion, and Cleansing Water. So you can see there's some synergy here. Notice this. Invigorating Torrents applies regeneration um, on Aura. And of course, Feel the Burn is a Fire Aura. So what this means is, is that every Aura is going to apply regeneration, which will then synergize with Cleansing Water to remove uh, a condition as well. And then on top of that, we also see the Soldier in. So basically, this is four Condies removed from the entire team alongside healing and boon application. Of course, that's giving protection too with elemental shielding and also vigor and regeneration with some healing too. So actually a surprisingly good skill or very uh, high efficiency skill. And of course, the Condition Cleanse is going to be absolutely insane on the Staff 5. Because Staff 5 is going to be not only cleansing conditions and healing players when that when those conditions get removed, it's also going to be applying regeneration at the same time. So massive condition clear being used on this build, while also having some solid defense against physical damage, or strike damage rather, because of the Earth trait line. So that's how this Tempest build is basically operating here. Also has that classic renewal ability here, alongside Lightning Flash, to get out of sticky situations and for some additional mobility. But yeah, the thing about Staff now is that Staff's come into play. You have a lot of stability application here because every time you get a magnetic aura while you're attuned to earth you're able to detonate that aura to give aoe stability to the team with a very very short cooldown so that's kind of what's going on here we even have latent stamina being picked by the way instead of unstable conduit the reason behind this is because uh whenever you grant vigor you're going to give people 15 endurance math. that's about one third of a dodge so what's going on here that means every shout basically feel the burn right is that you're going to give one third of a dodge back to nearby allies alongside attuning to water as well will also give that endurance regeneration bonus uh to allies and obviously hey if you can give everyone kind of one third of an energy sigil in a big team fight, that's going to add up to some huge value actually at that point. 
But anyway, that's basically how this team is going to be operating. Definitely a, a very interesting composition that we see. We'll see how this actually faces off against some of these other teams. I'm very interested to see how this team works against Demolish's team, for example, alongside Enigma. Will be a good clash of stars. Let's take a look at Mamiya's now. So the game is... Oh, maybe they got a buy, actually. The game does not appear to be starting, so that might be what's going on there. We do not see anything, really, uh, going on here in that regard. But let's take a look at this one, I guess. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, so the blue team doing well here. I don't actually recognize these players, but they seem to be doing a good job in this particular matchup. Again, with the support Tempest. Winning the game. Well done, team, for winning the game. Blue team gets it done. Love to see that. And actually, we, we actually have a fairly close match happening here. Over here. So let's go and take a look at this one. I think this might be a pretty good game to actually commentate for our first round. So we actually have... Ooh, the red team actually losing their Reaper. Ooh, they're about to lose a Guardian too. There it is. So blue team having a bit of instability there. They had this uh, Mechanist go down state, but they were able to actually rally quite efficiently. Oh, no, the Virtuoso just runs in. That is not what we want to see here. Uh, does manage to get away with the Blink, but another player falls here from the Chronomancer. Red need to regroup here. They've lost one of the buffs. The Sword buff goes to the blue team, so they have to be a little bit careful here, I think. They've got to back up for a while because they still have two of their very important players not in the fight. And even a third, actually, as the uh, Chrono Monster, I believe, has not respawned just yet. Here they come. But Red need to play it safe. I do like the Virtuos actually forcing this decap. We'll now begin this 1v1. It's actually a power virtuoso. That's somewhat uncommon. Actually, you don't see that very often. It's usually kind of this really annoying uh, kind of uh, duelist style build that has a lot of invulnerability attachment. Yeah, it actually doesn't end up going down there. The mechanist now moving in. And the scrapper picks up a pretty quick kill there before moving on over to this team fight on middle. And again, I feel like red are in a bit of a scary spot here. Blue team, I think, should be able to do a god in this duel with this team fight. Actually, Starsheep is dead. Can they revive that? No, they can't. So now they've got to disengage. We have Ethorn. This is, I, this is a very... Well-known player, I think, actually, uh, is Ethoral. Always loves Trapper 1v1 Soul Beast. Very well-known player from the ranked ladder. And here we go. Here comes the Catalyst, attempting to get this 1v1 going. The Soul Beast does find the decal, though, which is nice. Of course, this build actually is a build that CMC has been trying to push. Not exactly the Trap build, more the Stance build, I would say, actually. The Jeweler's Soul Beast. But... If you're not aware of these traps, if you don't play around them, this build can absolutely destroy you. And I think we're kind of seeing that here with the Catalyst. A nice immobilized lands. This Catalyst is done for. You can see that this build is quite durable and really has that very solid area pressure. The Catalyst, I think, underestimating the traps and ends up getting punished for it. Should be a very clean kill here for the Soul Beast. Lands that 1v1. Meanwhile, the team fight has erupted here on mid. The mower is going to land, but the mower missed, I think. Oh, no, it did land actually onto the Scrapper, but the Scrapper line of sight's pretty well. Can they survive this? They do survive very nicely, actually, on full health. And now they'll be able to counter pressure with the Gyros. Let's see how this one's going to go. Oh, a lot of damage from that Scrapper. This Scrapper build really pumping here. And they found that target on the Reaper. Can the Reaper survive? Now, this is the advantage of playing... This is actually a Power Reaper, I think. Yeah, this is not the Condi Reaper, so a lot squishier than the Condi build and doesn't it going down. This is why the Condi build typically performs very well. The issue with Power Reaper, you are just too much of a glass cannon. You're way too much of a glass cannon. You cannot survive in these big fights very well or with sustained focus. That's why you break out the Condi build. The Condi build is much better at holding on as it simply has a much larger uh, vitality pool and therefore a lot more Death Shroud to hold on for as long as possible. It also just applies a lot of weakness as well. And weakness and boon corruption, very good. You know, it's kind of that a, a good offense is the best defense kind of thing, right? That's exactly what's going on there. The Reaper will corrupt all the boons, all the might, all the quickness, and allow itself to survive uh, pretty well. But this is a power Reaper, so none of that actually applies. Oh, I do not like the Reaper pushing this 1v1. This is not a good idea. Especially that now we also have an additional player moving in here with David Shakes It Off here on the Warrior. Very interesting build here, actually, from the Spellbreaker. Mace Spellbreaker. The Reaper is able to actually wriggle away pretty effectively. But I think Blue Team have kind of got this one in the bag. Let's see if that Mamiya's game has started. I believe they may have just simply got a buy, though, uh, as that game did not initiate. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so they just got an immediate buy. And it looks like this is actually going to be one of the slower games uh, towards the end here. And I think we're kind of getting towards the finale of this. As the blue team have managed to stabilize this match very, very well. We actually have the Catalyst getting taken out by the Mechanist over here as well. Alongside the Scrapper, that should be that. Some kills over here as well. Ethornal might not be able to get this kill. Oh, gets a CC actually. Might be able to poison that and gets the job done. Oh, the Warrior with the Banner finishes it off. Ethornal holding on here. And they managed to get the Chronomancer as well and close out the game quite nicely. And the Dancing Choi again. Gang secure their victory. Well played by the blue team. I think we're going on to the next round. And also thanks to Plenix 
for the raid. Cocker raid, sauna raid, plenga raid. Love to see it. Very nice. All right, I think that's the next round. Let's see if we have ourselves any big games that have popped up. Okay. Ah, yes, we actually do. Oh, I kind of curse them. I actually feel a bit bad for this. This is going to be a tough match for Enigma's team. And of course, um, Enigma and Demosh is kind of a bit of a reunion here. Enigma, Demosh, and Maya, I believe, are all... I think they're all on the same team, right? Um, because that is, of course, one of their previous rosters that we're playing, or they're very similar to, which is indeed a team barcode. A uh, team that was very consistently performing well in the monthly. Oh, and actually, no, we have kind of a bit of a, a clash of rosters. Yeah, we actually have Enigma here, Fly, Zeon, Demolish, and Rip. Kind of a kind of scuffed team barcode, I guess, a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Scuffed team barcode here on the blue team. And we have, uh, again, a bit of a hybrid here, I think. This is kind of, you know, a bunch of random people. It's not actually a French team. It's not the Worms. Are the, are the Worms not playing, guys? Or are the Worms playing with Mamias? That Maybe that's it. We'll have to check that after this, because uh, I'd be very surprised if we didn't see a spree playing, for example. But, of course, it's entirely possible that they aren't even here, right? They just might not even be here, of course. You can't, you know, you can't show up to every monthly, guys. But um, we'll see what happens when we leap into that game. But, yeah, that's going to be another very powerful roster. But this game is exciting, actually. Very exciting. Oh, Raikkonen is the other playing with USA on NA. Interesting. Okay, yeah. So that's the worms are kind of split between regions then. So we actually have a bit of NA action going on there. Okay. All right, then. So let's see how this is going to go. It is going to be that Bladeshorn here from Demorge, as we see. And rip on that Chrono Mod. So this is going to be the Duelist Chrono. Ooh, he's actually going to maybe swap it up. Yeah, let's see what he's actually going to go with. He's swapping between those builds. We don't know what it's going to be. Zeon is playing this kind of 1v1 build. This build, very powerful, actually. It has great utility. It can 1v1 super well, but it also is a very powerful presence in the team fight. At the same time, has very powerful crowd control. Also delivers good support to allies too with Aegis, healing, and Alacrity. And Alacrity is very powerful. You can actually generate uptime. It did get nerfed a little bit. Uh, last patch, you can see here that the Alacrity duration has gone down from the Wells. But it is still definitely a formidable force hit. And we have a slightly different approach here. Ah, we do see Relux. It's not going to be Condi already. I wasn't expecting it to stay there because, again, that build, not quite where it needs to be. It's a little bit too slow to keep up with the current meta. But it is going to be Frey on Catalyst and Misha on the Core Guard uh, as the support here. So let's see how this is going to go. And they're going to go straight for Misha. Wow, blue team just barreling down on that support. Catalyst trying to peel him out. But actually, this is very, very scary. Misha getting beaten down. I've got to change my character model limit here. It's Misha just dead here. Does manage to get through the portal and wriggle away, but a very aggressive opening here from the blue team, pushing all the way over and actually securing that node, planting Demolish down on that. And that's definitely what they're going to want to do here. Utilizing this Blade Sworn to lock down some of these positions, using the Chronomans to do the same on the other side of the map. Definitely going to be a key part of the strategy. Now, Zeon is outnumbered, but the Thief is nearly here. So he has actually managed to hold on sufficiently long enough. And they can now initiate this 2v2. Scrapper from Draza here as well. So a lot of damage. But actually, with a 2v1, you know, with two players here, this is going to be very scary for the Scrapper to survive, I think. And particularly with that Thief, will have the chasing power to be able to potentially secure one of those kills. Fly is a little bit low. Rip very low on the other side of the map, though, actually. Is full power damage, so of course quite squishy, but they were actually able to secure that kill on the um, Tempest, sorry, the Catalyst rather. Misha going for the res. Can they actually find that? Oh, yes, Misha gets that revival and Fly does die here. So the 2v2 is going to go in favor of the red team. Very well played there by red team. The sufficient kiting from the scrap was good enough to actually sustain there in order for the uh, Untamed to continue to uh, do a lot of damage there with those two players. Too much DPS and three players now have been killed as Rip. After not being able to secure that kill on the Catalyst, unfortunately does fall after that. And this team fight, not looking good uh, for blue team. And yeah, the core guard is also going to go into the downstate here as well. Definitely not an ideal scenario here uh, for the blue team. Okay, and yeah, now this is where things have got scary. So blue definitely had a good opener, but their matchups were not where they wanted to be, right? That 2v2 was simply not favorable for them. And unfortunately, they were not able to win the 3v3. It was pretty close, but they couldn't quite manage to win. Now they're going to have to go for a full regroup. They need to wait for their Guardian, really, here, I think, uh, before they really engage in this fight. But I do like their approach. This is the correct strategy. Running in and feeding is certainly not the way to go in this particular situation. 
And now they can kind of start to reclaim the map here as best they can. The Guardian is going to be a little bit late, and that's scary here. Dimash already taking very heavy pressure. The Gravity Well bringing the pain there, and just continued focus onto this Blade Sworn. Does manage to get a good disengage, and the Guardian has now arrived, but yeah, very, very low here still. Looks like the target is going to be onto Draza. Can they find this Scrapper? There shouldn't be a revive, as it was already used by Misha. There it is. So blue team are able to get something on the board in. Now, can they get more kills? Getting one kill is honestly, it's okay. And that certainly puts them back in a position to make something happen. But a really good disengage, actually, from the blue team. Uh, from the red team, rather. Good kiting by Dimash, though, to survive that. But here we go. Blue kind of want more. Ooh, Fly actually gets exploded, unfortunately. The res is not good enough. There was poison on the body. They've got to actually hand res that. And they really don't want to lose. So they don't want to lose their momentum. They already got it back. And they are able to get that revive. But actually, Fly is going to go down again. Frey really on target there. Just zerging down that thief. Continuous pressure from the Catalyst. Another hand res comes through. Fly has got to get out. Should be able to go for the decap. But Maya is in very much in hot pursuit. Not letting that thief get a free disengage by any stretch of the imagination. And now let's see if this fight is going to continue. I think Blue probably want to defuse it a little bit. I don't think they'd really want to be going too crazy here. Here comes the block from Rip. Rip getting very hard focused. Some very quick dynamic target swapping coming through here from the red team. Really uh, making it quite difficult, I think, actually, uh, for the blue team to actually get a lot of value out of these very high damage classes. Fly on the Daredevil taking massive damage. Oh, doesn't have a dodge. Has a dodge now, but not quite in time. Fly. Oh, the Gravity Wall's going down. The Cleaver's going to be massive. They're going to go for the res. Oh, the Chrono Wells are really helping, but it's actually not going to be enough. And Demol goes down. Massive cleave, and that's really the catalyst. Well, to be honest, it's the catalyst, the untamed, and the scrap are all coming to bear. They're incredibly difficult to revive against all of this massive area of effect damage uh, that those three builds can actually deliver here. Super hard to deal with. They nearly had it, but it wasn't quite enough, and that might actually kind of end the game. To be honest, I, I think this is hard to recover from now because now they're, they're losing another place. They might lose their Guardian piecemeal too. Guardian is able to wriggle away, but Rip bleeding out now. Zeon dead. Fly just coming back now. Oof. That is a very serious blow for the blue team. It's going to take them a long time to be able to actually get back, out, uh, get back out on the map and actually get something done. Uh, because again, they have to wait for that respawn really. And by the time that blue team is really fully operational again, red team will be over 300 points. Very difficult, I think, to recover. Blue team definitely fighting harder. They're not going to give up. It's been a relatively fast-paced game so far. Just five minutes in with 300 points in favor of red. And here's that other fight. If red team overextend here, there's definitely some hope, but a very uphill battle for blue. Okay. Here we go. So blue is re-established. Red team are playing very safe, by the way. Uh, what you'll notice is, is look at their map position. They're not really wanting to fight over waterfall that much. They're just going to pull back. They know they're in a really good winning position right now. They're not going to overcommit. They don't want to overextend. They kind of overextended a little bit previously. They didn't have that revive and they weren't able to get their player back up. They were able to handle it quite well, though, by simply continuing to, you know, eventually win that fight on middle with the rebound taking out the thief. And all Draza... In a bit of trouble here. Does go down. Does Misha have the revive? He does. Is he going to land it? Yes, he does. And rip very low. That squishy power chrono. Certainly a popular target for the opponents. Oh, those nades really landing. Here we go. Rip actually holds on nicely. The hazard shield. Now, if we see Draza go down, this could be a big win for the blue team. But do they actually have anything to actually make this happen? Oh, and yeah, the focus onto Rip is very, very nice um, from the red team here. They are really not letting this Chrono get any kind of value. And even though the revive comes through onto Rip, unfortunately, Fly is not revivable. And I think Xeon is about to fall too. Yeah, the, the, the problem here is that red are just shutting down Rip incredibly hard. This build does massive DPS. It's Berserker Amulet with Eagle Rune, of course, with Domination, Illusions, and Chronomancer with the Great Sword and Sword Shield. But unfortunately... Uh, there's just too much damage for this build to be enabled. A lot of sticky damage as well. That's the problem for the Chrono. The Chrono is having a really tough time kiting here and disengaging away from these fights. Uh, the red team just have very mobile damage dealers, particularly on this map, which is quite a flat map. It's quite hard to kite here. Uh, Rip is just not able to survive and actually get anything done very effectively on this Chronomancer build. Uh, so some good strategy, some good identification of the kind of the weak point or, or the, you know, the, the key tactic to counter the blue team strategy here. And they've done a very good job of that. And I think, yeah, red team should have this one in the bag pretty clear. I want to see what the French are doing up. Let's see what the French are up to. Oh, wow. They've already 500 owed their opponents. So uh, a pretty decisive matchup there. Uh, for the French team. We'll see how they go. And we might actually see them against this Draza team in the next round. That's very much a possibility that that could happen. 
Uh, let's see what else we got. Actually, we have a pretty intense match here between the Dancing Choi Gang and Bell's Doll. Let's go take a look at that. Here we go. Oh, wow. The blue team, maybe having a little bit of trouble at the start, have... Whoa! whoa. Wait, whoa! Okay, actually, never mind. That was not what I was expecting, but it does appear that blue team is dominating this game. It's just that the red team went for a Lord Rush at one minute into the match, and that's where a lot of these points came from. I think that, I have to admit, that does actually make a lot of sense. I do believe that the blue team here, I was almost surprised that the red team had got this many points, as this blue roster is actually very strong. A lot of very uh, good players here, and I think the red team are definitely going to have a little bit of difficulty kind of contesting into this team in terms of the actual fights themselves. Yeah, that's uh, kind of what happened there. A bit of a Lord Rush gamer. There it is. The Lord has now been rushed. But I think blue team are going to end up winning this game. Do we have anything else that's looking a little spicy, a little close? Uh, not particularly. How about this one? Oh, that one's actually over. This one, maybe? Okay, so we actually have some big gamers over here. Ah, so we have the red team. It's going to be Crafty K on the Willbender. Mesmer is not good on the Virtuoso. We have Hoyogo on a Catalyst. We have Fup on Support Guard. And we have Umbra Ragnarok on Thief. Going up against Akahed Rev, Kaswari, WWI Lock. I, mean, I don't know what that is. Okay, X Lucasia and Entity Null. Ooh, edgy name. Red team, though, currently very much in control, dominating. If they can clean up this team fight, they should basically win the game from this point. I wouldn't see much of a way for blue team to recover at that point. There it is. Oh, oh. wow, that was actually a really funny res. The Berserker managed to just get a, like, a random hand res, but I think it is basically prolonging the inevitable as the Reaper from blue team is simply not going to survive. They cannot disengage. It is basically going to be game over. Mesmer is not good, pushing into the Vindicator will be assisted very shortly by the Willbender, and that will at least force the node away, if not outright kill the Vindicator. Willbender, although not exactly an Omega class right now, can certainly be powerful at getting quick kills. There's a lot of damage, very high mobility. As you can see, look at all these crits, guys. Absolutely insane DPS. Revenant goes down, and that is basically going to be it. All red team has to do is AFK on their nodes, and they will have achieved victory in this game. That is it. Twitch drops, by the way, guys, will be going on until, I think, the end of tomorrow, uh, NA time. So basically, tomorrow, yeah. So you, you, got, you got over 24 hours. You got plenty of time. Don't worry about it. You got no problem. And hey, I've probably got four hours, well, maybe three hours more stream today. So we can sort you out. Red team going to go for the Lord to close it out. Doesn't really matter at this point. They can probably kill it in time. Yeah, they only have one node. Now they have a second. Let's see if the red team can deny the Lord. I'm pretty sure they're not going to be able to, uh, but we'll see. Here we go. Oh, the Rev gets in there and actually does do very heavy damage to the Catalyst. There's no support here, I think, uh, for the red team. So they have got to be a little bit careful. The cast is still alive, which do a lot of damage and, of course, heal the Lords. So they probably do want to get rid of those. Uh, this is a classic thing you got to do. you got to kill the casters, guys, before the Lord. And I think Red Team might be getting punished for not doing that. However, they have a fourth player here, and the Lord is going to go down. Can they stomp it? Here comes the Thief. Shadow Step stomping. Stomps the Lord. And there we go. Hard but not stuck. Help me, bro. I'm hard stuck. Secure the kill. Get the win. And there it is. 639 points. Absolutely beautiful. That's the end of the round. How many rounds have we got, by the way? It's a five-round AT, so not quite as populous as the previous. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. I really want to have a look who the Frenchies are playing with to see what on earth is happening in this matchup. Let's take a look at the Pain versus Gizmo robbery game. I think that could be pretty interesting. A lot of the other matches I think will be fairly straightforward, but yeah, I'm just going to see what the French roster is looking like. And yes, this is PvP. PvP gaming. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very nice. No boys. Well, yeah, I mean, wait. What does this mean, though, guys? If, if it's no boys, no win, 
What does this mean? If, if there's no boys playing, does that mean nobody wins? Yeah, I'll be streaming tomorrow. Don't worry, guys. Plenty of time to get your drops. You're all good. Let me into the game. Let me in. Yeah, it looks like we don't have Ultranum this time. No Ultranum, guys, this time around. Unlucky. If there's no boys, cancel the monthly. Oof. Brutal. Ah, uh, this is actually a good team as well, actually. I think they all probably have a little bit of difficulty uh, against Draza's team, but still very powerful. Stellan. Uh, I don't, who even is this? Garo. I don't know what this is. Some kind of uh, char thief going on here. We have a Blade Sworn. Barcode. There we are. Barcode Blade Sworn. Tricuna on the uh, Herald right now. It looks like a Condi Herald as of right now, but we'll see if that actually gets swapped up later. And then Made in Meta Ace. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is fake Torben, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and there you have it. Beautiful. Ah, uh, Benzo in the chat. Okay, let's go on to the next game. Uh, Frenchies, who is it? French roster. Ah, oh, Esprit benched. Well, clearly not. Oh, actually, maybe yes. Wow, guys. Esprit is benched. It is confirmed. Esprit benched here, actually, as you can see on the uh, the Tempest, the uh, Staff Tempest there. It is going to be the same build by the looks of that uh, that Frey is running. Yep, very exactly the same build. We have Kill on the Catalyst number one. We have Esprit's son, okay, uh, here on the second Catalyst. We have Gok X, guess who? On the, what are these character names, guys? On the Blade Sworn and returning, actually, it's going to be the Ultimate Dark Worm. Definitely a big Rev player. So if anyone can make Rev work in the current meta, it's certainly going to be Azers. Uh, Revenant, actually, weirdly enough, is um, this is actually the time where Rev has kind of fallen out of the meta in PvP. It's very uncommon for that to happen. Revenant has historically been one of the absolute bread and butter professions in PvP. But actually, Rev is not super strong currently. That's why you're not seeing that many. You're seeing basically every other profession except Rev uh, is actually in the meta right now. Pretty exciting stuff. But let's see what it's going to be. It may well be this Condition Herald here. Um, I, I, I think that probably strikes me as like the best build for Rev currently. I want to say I don't think Vindicator is actually that good. And it is going to be a Condition Herald here um, from Azaz. Me staff and then mace shield. So a build that has a lot of defensive application. A lot of the damage comes out from, of course, the facet abilities, Maleks, and just having the mace. Mace, a very powerful DPS weapon. This can definitely work, right, in these team fights. Of course, I don't think we're going to see its true potential um, really utilized here. As again, this is going to be a pug team against some of the best players in the game, uh, and maybe that might even lead Azus to go for a relog later on against um, a team that is, uh, you know, uh, going to be more of a challenge. But we'll certainly see what happens. Uh, the Reaper build. Uh, let's see if it's actually the uh, see if it's the correct Reaper build. It actually is. Yeah, this is basically the uh, Reaper build that's being played right now. It's Staff, Scepter, Dagger with Carrion Amulet and Rune of the Traveler. That's how it is. Oh, yeah. But as you can see, the Reaper is very good at situations like this. Oh, sorry, not the Reaper, rather, but the, the Herald. The Herald is very good at just consistently doing a lot of area pressure, area comedy pressure. And here you go, you can see the Reaper kind of chasing down this and reviving against a uh, Herald can be very scary, actually, because it can apply poison with its auto attacks and just has a lot of burning and torment cleave, which, of course, torment now dealing more damage to targets that aren't moving um, essentially means that you have a very good time when it comes to actually killing down states, right? Because down states don't move. So if you actually have that um, Herald kind of ramp up there in some of these team fight positions, oh boy, like you can really do some serious damage output with this Herald. But yeah, this should be a pretty straightforward game uh, in favor of the blue team here, as you can see. Uh, just very good team here. Uh, definitely going to be one of the competitors for this monthly, I think. And we'll have to see how that actually ends up going here. We have a Blade Swan versus Blade Swan 1v1. Let's see who wins, guys. Let's check out this matchup here. Incredible content. They can just stare at each other forever with Dragon Trigger and see who blinks first. That's the real content there. Okay, so the Blade Swan is now going to land the Dragon Trigger. Does land it. Interrupts. Can't get away. That was a very big damage there. Yeah, it's uh, Goku, guys. Uh, the warrior. It's Goku's ult. 
Returning. Hasn't played the monthly for a while, actually. But now that Warrior is back, Goku is also back. Maybe. A little bit. Esprit on the bench, though. Let's see if we have any other matches. I think this one has some potential. Yeah, Pain versus Gizmo Robbery. Let's take a look at this one. In we go. Yeah, this, these are two both good teams. Let's see actually how these work out. So you are delusional again on this Condition Reaper. In play now. Ooh, and yeah, of course, Reaper, even when it is this Condi build, it can be a little bit vulnerable. Has to be careful. This is a good map for Necro, though. Necro will certainly have a lot of kiting potential. The big weakness that Necro has is that it has a lot of difficult... It's very good at, like, doing damage, but it's not super good at securing kills because it is still quite slow. A lot of builds in the meta right now are quite fast, right? You look at, you know, Untamed, Thief, Spectre, Catalyst, Scrapper, all this kind of stuff. You're very fast. You're very mobile. You have a good... You have a lot of chase potential and hunt potential to actually finish stuff off. Reaper kind of trades some of that chasing potential for mass damage potential, right? Like, if you are in kind of a 3v3 scenario, right, Reaper will just crush. Uh, and it will also massively reduce the damage output of the enemy team as well. It's very good at removing boons and applying weakness, especially this particular build, right? Um, because you have a lot, you have the dagger offhand, which applies weakness. And also you have the uh, enfeeble weakening shroud there for even more weakness application. Very disgusting stuff. You love to see it. Anyway, as you can see here, you are delusional trying to connect on the Reaper. Does have this blind well too. This is a, this ability is actually disgusting. Incredibly good skill for mitigating damage, but also doing damage, of course, because uh, this build runs deathly chill. So whenever you chill a target, you also apply a bleed as well. A lot of damage just all over the place. Kind of disgusting. Core guard though does die here, unfortunately. So the Reaper has to get away. There's no support available, and that fight is essentially lost. Blue team certainly outmaneuvering their opponents there, like not really playing into it, which is exactly what blue team should do. They're really utilizing this double thief play here with one Spectre, one Daredevil, because they don't really want a team fight into the blue team here. That's just not what they want to do. Particularly seeing as it's, it's a catalyst and a Reaper and a core guard, whereas the blue team don't even have a support, right? They have no support. So they don't really want to be having these, like, larger encounters. They want to split the map up as much as they possibly can, force bad matchups for their opponent, and, well, yeah, uh, that did not go very well whatsoever. Unfortunately, the Catalyst essentially just brutally got owned uh, by the Blade Swan in a couple of seconds there. That's really not what uh, the red team need whatsoever. So a very good performance there by Floor on the Blade Swan. Of course, a very strong build, actually. Oh, and Skog X goes down as well. Gizmo Robbery. I think the police are here, unfortunately. And this robbery is not going to be going ahead. As the blue team very much in control of this particular matchup here, actually. Okay, here we go. We have uh, Oki kiting up here on the Untamed. About to engage. Now the Thief is here. This is a bit scary for the Blade Swan. Of course, Blade Swan very powerful in these 1v1s. Oh, a very nice interrupt there, actually, from the Untamed. But Blade Swan very tanky. Very, very tanky, as you can see. The Catalyst arrives to save the day. And, yeah, I think we're going to see Blue Team mostly disengage. This is not a fun 2v2 for the Blue Team whatsoever. Oki will just kite this out here and try not to die. Ooh, does fall off, though, which is a bit spooky. Gets the stealth, though. Very nice use of the smoke scale to actually leap through that field and get the troll engine and survive. So very nice kiting there from Blue Team. Ooh, we have Pain in a lot of pressure here, but actually manages to kind of mind game the opponent there, actually, by staying up there with the stealth, going through a smoke foot again to sustain up again pretty nicely. Blue Team, though, just doing a good job of not losing stuff, right, and holding onto the map, and Red Team really struggling to connect. That's not really a surprise. Their comp is definitely a little bit slower, a little bit less good at holding these multiple fights. <coughs> the double ranger proving to be quite the threat i think for the red team and then combining that with the double thief meaning that it's very easy for blue team to out rotate their opponents red team really need to be on point and be in the right place at the right time otherwise they are just going to get pushed around by this highly mobile comp from the blue team essentially they have look blue team they've gone for the ultimate strat guys look this is actually insane brain. We have one duelist for every single node. We have a warrior and two rangers, right? They can stand on all the nodes at the same time. And to be frank, that is exactly what they're doing. Oh, it looks like Floor is going to go down there. They, the Reaper did manage to land a massive elite skill stun uh, with the assistance of the Guardian there. And that is going to be a death hit. I almost feel like Blue Team could actually save Floor here, actually. Particularly if they're able to kill this thief. I almost want to see Pain go for a res here. Uh, yeah, I kind of do. I think this is kind of a free res if they're able to get that. Or uh, I guess they, they aren't going to be able to get this kill. Let's see if Pain could actually get Floor. It's kind of doable here. Yeah, it's going to go for it. Ah, uh, yeah, no, the Thief is also on point, though. 
there was potentially an opportunity there, like during that revival, they tried to go for the res, which they, or the kill rather, which they were not able to connect. A minor setback there, as we do see the Blade Swarm from Blue Team fall. If we see more kills, this could actually potentially destabilize Blue. Oh yeah, they are going to chain it. Skog X going to actually finish off this Ranger. Pain in a little bit of trouble, actually. He has 2,000 health left over. He's going to go for the hammer. Ooh, Red Team looking to force the hammer. Can they actually find that? Yes, they can, actually. I don't think the Thief can really sustain. Nope. Ooh, okay. Red Team with a bit of a breath of life here. Are they going to get another stagger kill? I think they are. Ooh, that is actually a bit bad for Blue. They have to be careful. Because, again, the win condition uh, for the Red Team is to kind of bunker down a little bit. Like, take control of the map, have their pieces in position, and just bunker, pretty much. If they can set that up, this could very easily go into a bad spot for Blue. This is a very momentum-based situation. Blue really want to have the tempo on their side. If they lose that, this could go wrong for them. However, they have done a good job of immediately disrupting this blade some with some of their respawns. That's going to immediately get rid of one node. But however, the Guardian and Reaper are over here getting rid of Cole. I'm not sure if this is going to be the hugest value because neither one of them really wants to 1v1 into this Ranger. So they can't really actually take that node or keep that node, really. And now, as you can see, Blue... Blue have kind of spidered their way back out into the map. And everything is neutral once again. Yeah, I, I think red team didn't quite rotate as they maybe could have done there. Uh, I think they were a little greedy going for this third node. I feel like the far node kind of won there. Because the Reaper and the Guard went here and they they got nothing, right? Cole didn't die and they didn't even get the node, right? And now Cole's going to get the node back. And they kind of died over here at the same time. Yeah, that, that was... Kind of went a little bit wrong there, unfortunately, for Red Team. They're not out of this yet, though. If they can just get another kind of big kill chain, uh, like they started that snowball by killing Floor. If they can pull that off again, then there's certainly some win potential here for them. But it's starting to get uh, a lot scarier now. Like, uh, because those points are slow points. 120 up currently in favor of Blue. It's going to take Red Team a long time. They need to... They Realistically, what they need to be looking to do is get a double cap here and hold the third neutral. I don't think they can really hope to actually get a triple cap because I think it's extremely unlikely that they ever really completely wipe their opponent and with two thieves on their team uh, on against them it's going to be almost impossible to actually hold uh three nodes at the same time it's going to be very hard to hold two nodes at the same time actually uh for the red team anyway you are delusional holding firm here pretty nicely I've seen a lot of variation in the utility skill choice as well for Reaper. Uh, you can definitely go with Nothing Can Save You. you can, sometimes you can go with the Fear Ring as well. Uh, the Nothing Can Save You is actually very scary because not only does it remove boons, it also has that um, unblockable element. Well, Cole going for the Stomp. It's not going to land though. The Rez is going to come through alongside the Stomp. There we go. There's a kill onto Oki. But Red need more than that. They need a lot more than that. Thief going for the decap. I like that. I think Cole will make it though in time. I, ooh, maybe. Oh, yeah. No, oh, a big knockback. The Basilisk fell. Oh, the knockback from Cole was huge there, actually. It landed at the same time as the knock. Oh, as that decap would have been successful. Skogex is actually just going to go and play the 1v1. Cause Thief, very powerful in a 1v1 if you have enough time to actually play the 1v1. However, I think time is running out for the red team. It's only 2 minutes and 45 seconds left on the clock, and they don't have any nodes right now. And the hammer's up, so they have to contest that. Honestly, I feel like red should maybe just concede the hammer, because uh, there's nothing to, you know, nothing to decap, right? They don't really care about the decaps. They're going to try and force it, but I think blue team can kind of waste some time here. Looks like red are going to concede instead, which, again, is perfectly acceptable, because they're ahead. Right, this is completely okay for them. Red are going to get the hammer. Uh, but again, I don't really see a way for red to win, unfortunately. They'll get this neutralization, but Cole will simply grab it again uh, almost immediately when it gets neutralized. Here we go. Oh, no, actually, no, the thieves were able to intercept as well. Oh, wow, they're not even going to get the hammer. Ugh. Yeah, now that really is unfortunate. Blade Swan dies over here, and yeah, that is going to be the end of the game, I'm afraid. Blue team are going to make it happen with a pretty clean victory here. And a good strategy, a great demonstration of two different strategies and two very different win conditions, right? Like, we really saw Red Team have this moment of clarity here, this section of the game, but a slight misrotation punished them. They were not able to get to that win condition of bunkering down on two nodes, uh, unfortunately for them. And yeah, the raw mobility and speed from Blue outmaneuvers the powerful teamfight composition. Um... Here on Skyhammer. That's going to be that. That's it. GG. That is the end. Well, I mean, it's the end in a minute or so when, you know, there are no more points. But yeah, I don't think yet. Yeah, it's literally impossible for Red Team to win at this point. They cannot win. It is impossible. It is GG. Who's the uh, Spectre? This is Ione. The, it's Pain and Ione there. On the Thieves. Oh, yeah.
Very good. Very, very good. That's it. Hmm. All right. Game over. That's it. Right. Give me the live matches. Give me this game. In we go. All right. Let's check it out. Okay. Here we are. This could be an exciting match, I think, actually. This should be a fun one. Let's see what we got. Ah, uh, and here it is. The ultimate dark worm. Zealith Unleashed. On the Catalyst. Nimbus Cloak. Man, these RP names. I love it here. From the Spectre. Okay. Flyhack, apparently, is going on here. Mamaya's on the Tempest, of course. On the red team, it's going to be Pain, Ione, Double Thief, Oki, Call, Double Untamed, and Floor. On the Blade Swan, this is the uh, Untamed build. It's uh, basically the same as the previous one. Signet of the Hunt. A lot of unblockable these days, guys. Like, unblockable is all over the place. You can't trust your own blocks these days. Okay. Boop. This will be a very interesting match. Again, we're going to see a bit of a replication of what we saw in the previous game, almost. Where we have one comp that has this support, which again is going to be doing really well in these team fights, um, and especially with the Herald as well, right? The, like these two together, right? The um, the Herald and the Tempest will be very hard to actually break through. There's even a little bit of fun synergy here, by the way, because Abyssal Chill activates on Frost Aura. So because Frost Aura can actually be applied by the Tempest, right, with the Icy Field, and of course blasting the Icy Field, this actually, or even, you know, leaping through the Icy Field, which of course the Herald can do, this actually means that that will be applying Chill and therefore additional Torment in these fights because of Abyssal Chill, because this actually interacts with Frost Aura. So a very interesting synergy between these two builds. Let's see how this is going to go. And yeah, to be frank, blue team, red team, are simply going to have to try to play three nodes here. They really cannot allow their opponents to bunker down. Might be quite difficult on this map. This is a very small, very linear map. Certainly a good map, I think, for the blue team's composition to work. And I do think that the blue team's comp is actually very solid because they aren't actually that slow. They do have the Spectre. They have got the Catalyst. In addition to their more kind of slower, beefier team fights uh, with the Tempest and the Herald. And Blade Swan's not too much of a slouch as well. And we'll certainly be able to kind of withstand the storm, right? Uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure on this Blade Swan to not die, right? It's going to be 1v2 a lot. And Goku needs to hold on as best as he possibly can until the Thief can reinforce. And yeah, Blue Team doing what I'm expecting here. They're going to try to bunker down on two nodes and simply play two. Ooh, but Goku does actually fall here. Too much pressure from the double thief. Here comes the Tempest. Will they be able to get that revive? Here comes the Glyph, but of course the Thief able to interrupt it very nicely. And yeah, they're not quite able to establish this. Could they somehow revive this still? Goes for the Glyph again. Actually does get it. With well, the set goes at 2%. The Water Glyph with a massive revival guaranteeing that res. Even through Poison. But actually, a kill is secured on the Spectre regardless. And now, so still, Red Team very much having it <coughs> kind of their own way at the start of this matchup. Can Azaz hold off? Looks like it's not going to happen. Or oh, has a shield block in one second. And here's the Tempest. Azaz survives. It's a massive heal there. Very nice. Yes, Oki. No win. GG's to Azaz's team. Definitely a big Azus fan in the chat. I like that. It's good to see people cheering on their favorite players. we got to have more of that, not less. Oh, Nimbus Cloak, though. The Spectre really getting bullied. A big target focus here for the red team. <clears throat> that definitely does make sense here. The Spectre is certainly one of the more vulnerable targets, actually. Um, you know, Thief has historically, historically been considered very hard to actually nail down. And that's certainly true of Daredevil. A little bit less so now. 
You don't have the Omega Shadow Arts build nearly as prevalent as it used to be. But yeah, Spectre, definitely more vulnerable. Not quite as slippery and as evasive as other thief builds. And Ranger, of course, having that massive long range, able to hunt down these thieves pretty effectively. And yeah, the red team's comp really working here. The blue team are not really able to get their value. It's been played out extremely well. Now, we shouldn't call this game early, though. And the reason for that is because right now we're living in red team territory. This is what red team want. However, if the blue team are able to split that map and get into this two-node lockdown situation, Tempest and the Herald are on one, Thief rotating between them with the Bladesworn locking down a node, if they are able to stop the momentum, this game can very quickly go pear-shaped for the red team. This would be a massive kill on Tukul if they can get it. Do they have the DPS for this? They've got a Dragon, but not in time. Unfortunately, couldn't charge up to get that stun. To secure the kill onto Cole. Some excellent revival play here from the red team. Getting that ranger back up. And yeah, already a sizable lead is actually being developed here by red. And yeah, this node of course untouched. That's not a surprise. I do think that blue team kind of has the right idea here. They just need to break through. They've got to find a few kills. If they can kill two or three of the red team. They should be able to stem the bleeding. Control the map. And then start to get themselves into a winning position. Uh, but red of course are obviously not going to want them to do that. Right? They're going to do their absolute best to prevent that from happening. Oh, and Zeal does find a very key kill actually. There's the thief going down. Now they need more. That's not good enough. Not good enough yet. They need to find another kill at least. Uh, would be really good to get rid of the blade swan for sure or one of the rangers let's see if blue team can do that of course red are not going to be super eager to engage now because they are a player down the thief has now returned moving back into the match can blue secure this node looks like azaz will be able to do that floor doesn't want to let it happen goes on to the, that could be potentially greedy floor taking very heavy condition damage from the torment there's the double node so this is what blue team wants now they've got to hold on so what the really big focus is um, if Azaz and Goku can survive, pretty much, is going to be the play. Oh, Goku may be going for a decap even, wanting to push this 1v1 onto Oki, conceding the mansion here. Zealoth now moving over to maybe try and hold on to this and keep it neutral at the very least. But yeah, Floor and Core were both killed there. That was two very key kills for Blue. And again, this is the kind of thing that Re uh, Blue Team really want. Now, they have got this third node. This is going to make it very difficult to hold on to, I think. However, the Blue Team are rotating over here now. Catalyst picking up this node. There's the mansion. Now, I almost want... Let's see what Blue Team want to do here. Like, I almost want to see them just back off and try and play two here in this type of situation. Just hold on. But it looks like they are really going to go for this third node here. Yeah, certainly a solid match. Classic Guild Wars 2 PvP. Very rotational. And that is actually very expected. A lot of the French games go this way. The French really like to play the map and play the rotational strategies. So not a surprise to see this game go in this direction. And now, yeah, we do have Goku trying to position himself on the, um, the windmill. Does manage to pick up that node. Tempest very low. Needs some support from the team. Will actually find it. Rebound up in a few seconds. Here's the water overload. That should resustain the Ellie quite nicely. There we go. Yep, does manage to land. Not out of the woods yet, though. Yeah, he's going to have to go for a self-res. Has to self-res. And rebound. Oh, cancels it and goes for a rebound instead. Good utility uh, usage here. Yeah, rebound activates. Big barrier. Very nice play there from kill. Resustaining, actually, on the Tempest. And now we have that same situation. We have that split, right? The split has happened again. And this is exactly what blue team want. So it's, it looks like they're actually going to ignore their own home node and simply try to really kind of uh, bludgeon the red team back into their own base. And here we go. And this is the thing that can be very scary when you are this more team fight oriented team. You gain points very slowly because realistically, red team are going to have one cap the entire game. There's not really much uh, blue team can do to prevent that. And that means you're only gaining one more point per tick than your opponent. So it takes a very, 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 very long time to actually get into that winning position where you're, where you're ahead in the game. But of course, if you can do it, it can be quite difficult for the, uh, the red team here to break the chokehold. And yeah, Goku, he's just got to survive. He's got to hold on until the Tempest um, arrives. And Zealith, of course, on the Catalyst. Doesn't want to concede the node. Really doesn't want to stand off the node here either. Does not want to do that. Yeah, you can see Goku completely unwilling to leave because he knows that they fought hard to get this point. They fought hard to secure the windmill. Azaz picks up a kill over here alongside the Thief, I believe, onto Curl. And yeah, here we go. I told you guys, this is what can absolutely happen. Azaz standing firm here with the Herald. Tempest kind of rotating between these two nodes. Thief, of course, doing the same. 
Catalyst looking for a kill. And I think this is why they wanted this node, because now they can track their opponent's movements very easily. Notice this. This is why having the far node and their middle node is good. They're just not caring about this. Maybe they go for a thief decap if they get a bunch of kills. But this means they're able to track their opponent's movement and kind of hold onto this territory and uh, be a bit more reactive here. It's a bit easier for them to rotate when they're holding their opponent's far node, because it's closer to the enemy spawn. So they can, uh, they can respond very dynamically to that. Essentially having good vision, right? By uh, noticing their opponent's movements. And now they're holding on. Red team going to try and break through here on middle by the looks of this. But Az is on full health and with the glint heal. He's not going to be dying anytime soon, I don't think. Even going for a kill. Oh, does actually slip off the edge though, which is not ideal. And again, just like Goku, has to be very aware of any potential decap. Needs to support the, the, uh, the Spectre though. Spectre is able to blink away quite nicely. Pressure coming through now from the Herald. Needs to get back to that point, though. Oki potentially decapping. Thief ports back in. Will be replaced by the Herald very shortly. Ooh, Thief actually nearly dies. Oh, is it going to fall? Is there a revive potential there? Oh, I, mm, I'm not thinking so, to be honest. There's three players here. And yeah, now Az is in trouble, too. Oh, is there a glyph? Oh, it doesn't land. But Cole does die, actually. So it's going to be a one-for-one -one trade. That's not, honestly, that's not horrible whatsoever, actually, uh, for the blue team. In fact, that might even be slightly favorable for the blue team, in fact in this context, because they're, they're perfectly okay. They have all of their key pieces alive. Uh, Goku does get drawn away. He actually makes it, but does now need help. Can he somehow hold on? I think there is still a revive. It probably got cancelled. There is, but they have to give up the node. Rebound comes through. It's one node apiece, but that's okay. Again, blue is now in the lead. So all they have to do is just gently try and resecure that node, and they immediately utilize their thief in all of that chaos to get a neutralization. So it's one node for them, none for the red team. Spectre going to try and go for the full cap. Floor should be able to bully the Spectre away eventually. Oh, but this is actually big. The fact that the uh, Spectre was able to actually pick this up is absolutely huge. Oh, do they get Floor? The Gravity Well, that might be a kill on Floor, actually. It is. Oh, that's a very nice movement there from Zealith. A huge kill from those players. Not only getting the node, but also picking up the Blade Swan. Even if they hadn't got that, that would have been really nice. Just having that node for a few seconds, getting them those extra points would have been absolutely massive. Very well played there by Blue. Blue really doing a good job, actually. You know, like, this is very much true. This is uh, basically the French Worms is this team. That, that, that's their team. I'm not flaming them, guys. They're actually called the French Worms. Uh, and this is very much exactly, this is textbook how they wanted to play this out. They played this out extremely well rotationally. And you can see them getting rewarded for this. They're going to be able to pick up another kill here with the Herald and the Blades one, I think. Yep. Ooh, and yeah, Red. They're in the danger zone. They have managed to get two nodes, so Blue do need to do something about that. But at this point, they're over the 400 mark. It's really scary now uh, for Red. They need to do a little bit more than this, I think. I don't think this is quite good enough. They would win on two nodes. Bear that in mind. So if there's no decaps, Red Team do win off the back of this. But they'd be really cutting it fine. If there's even a neutralization here or there, it's very scary. Uh, very, very scary indeed. If there's even one decap. Okay. Or even a single kill, actually. Red do not want to lose another player. At all. Ooh, and that was a big gravity well there by the, the Thief. Actually, some big pulls, I think, by the uh, the Herald, too. Okay, and here we go. Blue team are going to be mounting their assault. We have this 1v1 here on middle. Condi Herald versus the Ranger. Almost reminds me of the original motor, actually, doesn't it, guys? With Condi Herald back. Okay, Goku trying to find his way over here. But red team, they kind of know that they're winning, in a sense, here. They know that they've just got to not allow this decap to happen. And they will win the game. So again, Red responding well here. They also understand what's going on here. They have completely read this correctly. And they know that if they can deny a decap, they will win. However, we do actually have Oki being driven away here. Yeah, there's a, it's a 1v2. The Thief rotated here. And if Blue can almost like distract their opponents, which they did. They distracted the opponents, held in middle with the Tempest and the Herald, decaptured over here. They're trying to force it as well. Zealus should be able to get this. All they've got to do is just not die here on middle. And lad, that Herald is such a roadblock here. It's a big problem. Very defensive. The Thief now rotates back in after this capture. Zealus able to hold this. This should be a... Yeah, this is die on node. Zealus at this point just has to basically stand on this point until he dies. And this should be a victory for blue. Same thing for the blue team here on middle. They just need to not die here for another 20 seconds or so. And they should be good. Does Tempest have cooldowns? Tempest does not really have full cooldowns. Does have the revival. 
So I think we're good to go here. Has protection uptime as well and water overload. Yeah, some good kiting here. I think blue team have got this. You know, games always get really close when you have this team fight style versus the other team having the more mobility there. Uh, but yeah, super scary. Definitely a, a solid map, a powerful map actually. Uh, for the blue team, definitely favoring them. Uh, but they definitely played it out as well. I'm going to say definitely a few more times. But anyway, yeah. They played that out very solidly and secured themselves a very intense victory. A very close matchup there between uh, these two rosters. We'll be very excited to see if they clash again later on. I think that's probably going to be the slowest game. I can't imagine many being slower than that. Yeah, we're going on to the next round. Is it going to be... Oh, yeah. Enigma versus Pain. That'll be a cool match, I think. And where is the Draza team? Oh, yeah. Draza versus French. We've got some good ones, actually. We have got some good ones. Okay. All right. Here we go. Yes, ye Azaz, yes, win. Yes, Oki, no win. What? 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 <laughs> Why is it party hat? <laughs> Why is this such an... Uh, wait, you d I think you did this last time, actually. Yeah, look, I'm looking at this guy's chat history. Okay, look at this. Yes, Mamaya's no win. Grats to Oki team. I have called this two hours ago. Okay, like... Well, <laughs> He's a big fan of these slightly deranged copy pastas. I like that. All right, next up. What are we going to do? Hmm. I think both of these matches are actually going to be very good. Enigma Pain, Mamaya's Draza. I'm tempted to see actually how the French... I'm very interested to see how the Frenchies are going to do against um, Draza's team, actually. Those, this might be some of the strongest teams in the tournament. So let's go ahead and check this one out when we get there. Ah, Boyce has arrived to enjoy the tournament. Yeah. All right, here we go. So we'll take a look at both of these teams. Uh, this will be a very interesting matchup. It's going to be on Capricorn here. And as you can see, we actually have, again, this team. We have Payne, Ione, Oki, Floor, and Cole. The double soul, the double untamed, double thief, and the blade swan. And we have, again, an interesting setup here. Again, very different. Everyone is playing something different this week. This is kind of fun, right? A lot of different stuff being played. We have Enigma on Support Guardian. We have Fly on the Thief. Zeon on the Untamed. And we have Demolish on Chronomancer number one. And we have that power Chronomancer coming out from Rip. So they've slightly changed this up a little bit. They've ditched the Blades on Demolish, in fact. Going to be playing the Chronomancer. And Zeon going to stay on the Ranger. Looks like they want a bit more uh, kill potential, right? They've gone for just more speed, more damage, right? They really want to leverage the Daredevil, Untamed, and the Chronomancer to really obliterate things incredibly quickly. Uh, and then have still have the Chronomancer as the duelist here. Just to hold down these points, provide a bit of that presence in the team fight alongside the Core Guardian to make sure that they're able to control the map efficiently. Should be a very interesting matchup here. Very, very interesting matchup. Um, I, I, we'll see how the opener on this one goes, and then we'll probably hop into the other game, because I think that other game has some serious potential to be cool. Because uh, again, you know, Condi Herald, this map is pretty big, and, and I think that this is a map that we might see the immobility of that Herald start to suffer a little bit, particularly with the fourth node, the bell, needing to be contested, because if you have an extra objective, it's harder to rotate around it if you're a bit slower. Uh, but of course, it is a bit teamfight-oriented, because it's a very powerful secondary objective, so the Herald can maybe deliver some value there as well. Yes, the Chalice Enjoyers have arrived. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. And Rip is going to have his work cut out for him because, of course, Chronomancer likes to block things to survive, uh, especially that shield offhand. But, yeah, there's a lot of unblockable from the double ranger there with double Signa of the hunt. So Rip is certainly going to be, once again, as we saw in the previous match with Rip in it, will be a very big focus target, I think. But actually, it is going to be Oki who gets killed. So it does appear that this kind of more kill style strategy that's coming out from Blue does appear to have paid off so far. A good reinforcement there onto Demolish. Krona will then immediately start dueling the Bladesworn here. Of course, Demolish himself, being a Bladesworn player, will uh, know this matchup, I imagine. We'll understand how it works. Be able to play around it. 
Uh, yep, there we go. Are we going to see another kill onto Core? I think we are, actually. Yeah, this kind of hunting trio, this hunting pack style coming out from blue, certainly proving effective. And I think that makes sense. There's no support for the red team. So it, it will be quite hard to survive if you're basically getting 1v3 pain trained uh, by a thief, an untamed, and a power chronomancer. So blue team's composition certainly giving them a good start in this matchup. And of course, when the bell comes up, the secondary objective, you get 25 points. You cap it once, then 50, then 75 after that. If they can actually get to these team fights with everyone alive, like they're going to have a good time, right? The amount of damage output they're going to have will make it very difficult to engage, particularly as we have Enigma on this support guardian uh, to really uh, be the glue that sticks the fight together for the blue team. Okay. So there it is, blue. Just doing a good job there. Not worrying too much about the third node again. Uh, just as we saw in the last matchup, the double thief from red makes it very hard to play three nodes. Oh, that should be a signet. Can he actually get out of line of sight? No. Yeah, the thief was able to steal because Enigma was not quite able to get to the line of sight. Goes for it again. There's no way that's going to land though. Yeah, definitely an ambitious move there. But yeah, good kill there. And you can see how having these thieves, it's super hard to keep up with these, right, um, as the blue team. But here comes the bell in 10 seconds. Here we go. Yeah, Fly went for a decap. Does get repelled. Let's see if we can see blue team secure a kill. If they can get a kill right now. They love that. Ooh, and here we go. It's going to be the Spectre that's the target. Fly wants to find it. Good Shroud is available, though, uh, for the Red Thief. Isn't going to die just yet. Chronomancer having this epic 1v1. Ah, Pain actually playing SD Thief as well. Of course, that also has unblockable, which can, again, like, uh, really shred through this Chronomancer. That Sword 3 attack there. And Pain feeling good to 1v1 on this, and definitely should be. Uh, Mesmer, historically, has a very tough time with Thief. Um, and, yeah, this is a Power Chronomancer versus an SD Thief. Definitely not going to be easy. Although, actually, Rip is not playing Power. I completely lied. He's actually playing the Condi build as well. I lied! Okay. It is just the Thief and the Untamed going for the kills. It's kind of like two duelist chronos. I always check the builds, guys. I'm a professional gamer. Now, here's the bell, and the Thief... Sorry, the Guardian is here for blue, and this is going to be a bit of a problem for red. I don't think red can really contest this. I think their strategy... Uh, is going to have to be kind of stall the bells out for as long as possible because they are not going to have the muscle to win this fight, I don't think. The Guardian is getting pressure, but just popped renewed, so has full cooldowns available. It's going to be super hard. I mean, uh, the, the Guardian is a bit exposed, but Oki is already downstate here. So yeah, this is just not, this is not going to work here for Red, to be honest. They're doing a good job stalling, though, which is very nice. But they haven't really been able to get any value on the map out of that stalling, unfortunately, for them. And even, of course, losing that. Rip has held off really well. Holy shit. Rip is kind of popping off. Still has Continuum Shift as well. So he's not even really that close to being dead, to be honest. Uh, there you go. We'll be able to double heal himself as well. Because bear in mind, you can, you can drop the well heal. And as, if you cancel your Continuum Shift or it's over, before the secondary heal from the well comes through, you can actually basically triple heal yourself, kind of, right? With Well of Eternity for massive self-sustain. Um, using Continuum Shift. So pretty good stuff there. And yeah, looking good for blue so far. They do lose uh, Fly, but I think they're going to trade it for Cole. Yeah, they are. No support for Red Bear Mine, so very hard for them to actually revive. And Guardian with the stability is simply going to stomp that out. No, they're going to maybe greed a little bit and bleed it. Or at least stall it for a few more seconds to give themselves that opportunity. Now, of course, the Ranger does have a dangerous self res, so you can't just like leave it there completely unattended. But of course, blue team far too good to actually mess around with that. The next bell is going to be coming up very shortly. And that bell could seal the deal. If blue can get that next bell, then I'm pretty sure they're going to put themselves in a very favorable position. Trying to grab middle. They've successfully done it. And again, we just have uh, Demolish now doing his thing. Holding off. Yeah, double chrono. Hard to break through, right? Very hard to break through. They simply cannot kill uh, Rip or Demolish. And that is exactly what, of course, the uh, the blue team want. They want to have these rocks, these uh, you know, these brick walls for the mobility of the red team, just to kind of bash into, right? That's their goal. Rip holding on to middle here, and here comes the secondary objective. If this bell falls to blue, I think they're going to be very much unstoppable in this matchup. Here we go. Yeah, Demolish will just begin this one v one into floor. Enigma lurking around looking for targets who need help. Yeah, looks like uh, notices the thief moving over there and then reinforces Demolish so Demolish doesn't die. The second thief is moving over too. That could be a little bit spooky, but does actually get repelled. Sees the Guardian moving, realizing it's going to be hard to actually get a kill here. But here we go. And here's the bell. 
This is a big moment. Let's see if any team actually has the time to go for it. Right now, everyone's pretty busy. And quite pressured, actually. Looks like Rip might be moving towards it. Uh, alongside Pain. Well, and actually, Rip might end up dying for that, actually. Tries to move over there, but kind of gets caught in the roads. Has a block coming up in a few moments. There's the shield. There we go. There's the heal, too. Gets healed up. And, ooh, Ioni is down. If that kill happens, and then we also see uh, this bell get captured... It's going to be spooky. Can Demolish make it to the node in time? Some very good delay tactics here by Red. You can see they're doing a really good job of actually stalling this out. Big projectile block. They're denying those shortbow attacks. Can Enigma get the survive? Wants to go for the res. Lands the signet. Does land it. Oh, that's huge, actually. Yeah, blue team make it. It was a rough road. It's a rocky road. They scrabble their way over here. But I think if they can just win this team fight, then I think blue team will have this game on lock. Yep. Fly finds Cole. Gets that kill. The Empower comes through. Big might up time. And yeah, in a team fight, in a 5v5, Red can't contest. There's simply no way. That is not going to happen. That is just not going to work. I think Floor is going to fall here too. That means the Bell should be yielded to the Blue Team. And the Blue Team are going to have this game locked in. I'll go check out the other matchup in just a moment. But there it is. Blue Team get the Bell. And yeah, let's go have a look at the other game. Nicely played by Blue. Really, really good. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow. Okay, the French are having some serious difficulty, actually. It's a good thing we picked that up. Oh, my goodness me. Things are not looking good whatsoever, unfortunately. And actually, it was the Connie Herald. Yeah, we opted for the Connie Herald here, actually, um, from Misha as well, alongside Frey, Wolf Spider, uh, Draza, and Maya. Completely devastating the French roster here, unfortunately. And ending the game uh, very quickly. Wow. Draza's team... Very powerful indeed. A very powerful team on the Catalyst this time as well, actually. Other match is over. The other match... The all the matches are over, guys. They're all over. Let's see. Oh, whoa, whoa. We have a match that is one point in between. Oh, shit. Let's do this. Okay, so on the red team, it's a team. On the blue team, it's also a team. Who do the Bells go to? Oh, blue team were ahead, but red team has actually mounted a bit of a comeback. They're back in. Catalyst from blue trying to wriggle away. Does have the block, I believe. And actually is going to end up falling. Red finding themselves another kill. So the real key here for blue is going to be they need to kind of uh, make sure they don't feed anymore. They do get a kill of their own on the Soul Beast. So if they could win this bell, they will basically win the game. Let's see if they can make that happen. However, red team are simply not going to let them get away with that that easily, of course. That will be simply ridiculous. Ooh, Reaper. Is the Reaper supported right now? The Reaper is supported, actually, but there's a lot of red. And where is blue team? I think blue team need to get over here. They haven't recognized that they basically win the game if they get the bell, I think. That Catalyst really tearing that Reaper to shreds. Is there a revive? Oh, blue team, I do not think coordinating this team fight very well. They were not well prepared for this. Can that revival come through? It's a, it's the res trait from Mesmer that should allow this to happen. We do have the heal skill. More players moving in. I think they've got to commit to this res. There's the Guardian res trait activating as well. Can they get it? Oh, they actually do get it, but I think the Guard's going to die. They have a kill, though, on the enemy Reaper. Can they win this cleaver? I think Crafty K can. There's the rally. A massive team fight here. I think Blue are going to get away with this. Yes, they do. It was a bit scuffed, a bit disorganized, but they They've managed to actually rally. Um, wow, nerves of steel from the blue team, and they seal it. And just 10 points ahead running. Ooh, hang on though. Can the Solbies contest? The Solbies contests. The kills might be enough to swing the map in favor, though. Or can the Guardian maybe get a knockback here? The Elementalist also trying to stall them by just going on the point as much as possible. Here comes the Catalyst here. Crafty K as well. Yeah, they know that this is a 75-point bell for them, I think. So they, all they have to do is just get this and they will win the game immediately. They're really trying to force the issue, which is definitely the blow. The Solby's holding on for dear life, but it's not going to be enough in the end. Uh, surely the Reaper can't make it. Or the Reaper is not going to make it. I think the Bell will be captured and Blue Team will secure this victory. No one can make it, right? And there it is. Oh, it's only a 50 point. But I guess the Red Team got one, but 50 points is all the Blue Team needs and they get it done. Oof. Close. Very close fight there. Very intense team fight there, but Blue Team able to rally it at the end, and hold on to their glorious victory. Oh, Enigma versus Pain. Oh, it's actually uh, still going. Oh, it just ended now, actually. There it is. Yeah, 500 to 299. Red team definitely made something happen there, I guess, at the end. Yeah, you can see they got a couple of kills, even got themselves a bow, actually, uh, and pushed onwards. But it was not quite enough. I think that appears to be the last game. Or one of the last games. Yeah, it looks like this might be the last game. And red team definitely looking good in this situation. They're pushing ahead about to finish this matchup, I believe. Okay, here we go. 
Dude, look at that Jacaranda. 12k damage on that Jacaranda? Are we nerfing this? That's insane. Yeah, that is an XED tree moment there. But yeah, red team, pick up this kill. And that will be the end of that. Boom. There you have it. Alright, there we go. That should be the end of the round. Is that actually the end of all the rounds? That is, yeah, we got that is the five Swiss rounds done. And we are now moving on to the elimination rounds. We of course we have our top eight teams located. We have Draza versus Payne, Stellan versus Gizmo Robbery, Enigma, Enigma versus Belzadar, and of course the Frenchies versus uh Terrazito. Is that this team actually? It is, yeah. Okay. So I think our best bet is going to be Draza versus Pain here. I think all of the other games are probably going to end up fairly straightforward. Stellan versus Gizmo robbery could be interesting. Yeah. And this one could be interesting too. All right. Let's see what we got. Onwards. It's nice to have drops for the monthly, though. 3k viewers on the monthly AT. It feels pretty good, guys. Feels good. Gizmo robbery. All right, here we go. Here we are on Legacy of the Faux Fire. And let's see what Misha's going to go for. Misha is going to go for the core guard this time on the support. And Frey is going to be the catalyst. And it's going to be another catalyst. Again, still standing firm here as the elementalist build is catalyst. With Draza also representing. A lot of elementalist here, guys. The Ellie mains, they're going to be happy here. Now, again, we have the support versus no support dynamic. So, yeah. It's just going to come down to will red team be able to destabilize the map sufficiently to win? The Blue Ranger is Wolf Spider. The Soul Beast. Could be winning the first month of AT. Wolf Spider has not won before. It could be happening now, though. We just don't know. Here on the Azura. A lot of Azura here, guys. Double Azura. Misha also on the Azura. All right, here we go. It's time to game. Is going to be a three node push from blue with Wolf Spider moving over here to the quarry. And it's going to be Draza hanging back here a little bit. Yeah, I'm not expecting to see too many massive team fights here. Because again, Red will try and prevent that at all possible costs. When Draza actually getting bullied a little bit, but Misha now does arrive. Does kind of make it in here pretty effectively before moving back towards middle. Ooh, actually, we do have a kill being secured on floor as well as we have the uh, Maya. Moving in on the, uh, on the Spectre. But Frey is down here on middle. There's the revival from Misha. The Master of Disaster. Pain now going for the decap. Floor being fully killed. So the first initial exchange very much going favorably towards the blue team. Particularly as they now get a second kill onto Cole as well. And blue now looking to secure middle. They're actually going to go for this third node too. We actually have Draza beginning to t uh, start to take this 1v1 over here. Here we go. And should be able to shove the thief away and at least get the node. Frey now moving in as well, just in case. But, yeah, blue team really taking control of the game. I think this might be fairly straightforward in favor of blue. I think this may be the journey's end for the red team. As I think blue just a little bit above uh, their opponents here. Just essentially playing a better game of Guild Wars 2. Definitely a very solid composition as well. And I think red team are simply going to bounce off it and be deflected, I'm afraid. Red team are simply too powerful. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. And also this one, also very straightforward. It's going to be a big win for the Frenchies here. Let's go ahead and have a look. I think this one... Let's see. Hmm. Which one? This one I think could be exciting. Ah, here we go. Let's take a look at what's going on. I'll actually check. I'm going to check the this game too, just in case. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A very powerful performance coming through from the blue team here. Yeah, this is a bit of a, kind of like a pug team here, I think, and they're certainly having some difficulty. So I think this is going to be the game we watch. Here we go. So on the red team, it's going to be Can't Switch, Skog X, Slogu, Dexters, and You Are Delusional. 
going up against Made in Meta, Mim Ace, Tricuna, Barcode, Garo, and Beastlan, aka Stalin. Very big content here. And so far, Red Team just actually winning a very decisive team fight there. Uh, picking up, I believe, uh, three kills, two or three kills there. So definitely a little bit spooky. We have the Thief attempting to 1v1 the other Thief. Of course, we'll probably be able to force the decap here. Uh, stealth, of course, will not favor the Defender in this matchup. But actually, oh man, those Shortbow 2s really bring the pen. And actually, Garrus instantly gets that kill, even with a plus one coming in there. Skog X being destroyed by the Char Thief. Of course, the Revive will prevent a lot of value coming from that, outside of denying this rotation right, and slowing this down. Beastland now back in the mix. Well, and the entire blue team is showing up here, actually. Or four of them. What are they going to do? What's the plan? What's the plan, gang? What are we doing? Going to go for a big stealth up. Okay. Blue team not really doing anything yet. No, so they're now going to go for the Reaper. Here we go. And wow, yeah, they're going to get the Reaper. The Reaper gets destroyed. Very low on health. And that's scary. They're almost certainly going to go downstate now when they leave Shroud. Gets a very nice port back up, though. The uh, the blue team kind of forgot about that. However, is it going to be enough? Gets the heal skill off. Trying to kite as best as they can, but it's not going to be enough. Do we have a revival? Yes, we do. Very nice precast there by the Guardian. Uh, Beastland now under a lot of pressure. And of course, with the Reaper being a little bit more healthy, up to 67% health, that damage is really going to start to kick in soon. Now, revive cordons are being traded. The Reaper, again, under that pressure, but has a good chunk of cordons, actually, that should be able to prevent the red team uh, from actually losing their Reaper. Yeah, there we go. You are delusional holds phone. Yeah, blue team kind of getting repelled. The health bar's not looking so hot. That was a really nice uh, kind of stealth burst there, but it did not really work out for the blue team. In fact, yeah, that Reaper just slowly wins. And this is definitely one of those things uh, about Reaper, right? And um, about Necromancer in general. It's just inevitable, right? It will just eventually kill you uh, in some of these fights. It's very, it's quite slow, but it has infinite damage, infinite pressure. Of course, very short cordon on Shroud, right? Which is where a lot of that damages. Every 10 seconds, it just keeps pumping, right? Over and over and over again. If you can't kill it, it will kill you. And yeah, the Reaper doing exactly that, continuing the pressure onto the Revenant. Here we go. Gets it done. Big DPS. And there it is. Yeah, and red looking in control here, for sure. We have this warrior jewel happening over here. Pretty infinite jewel. It's taking ages. And blue managed to find a bit of a decap, which is definitely nice. We love to see that. We absolutely do. But not sure if there's much that blue team can really do here. Because if you can't win these fights, and you're trying to take those fights... And you can't really win the game, right? Uh, so blue team are either going to have to step up and find a strategy in order to win these team fights, or simply avoid the team fights. Okay, blue team secure the waterfall here, and then they have their full force of team in play. And red are actually outnumbered here; they have uh, their one player down. And in fact, yeah, they were probably a little bit greedy there. Running that core guardian in immediately is going to result in a death here against the red team. Let's see if the rest of them can get away. If they only lose one player, it's not that bad. They are going to lose two. Now, that is a pretty scary moment. Uh, let's see if blue team can convert this into some map momentum and a bit of a snowball. Let's see if that can happen. Here they come. A little bit cautious from blue, but, you know, that does make sense. They don't want to accidentally completely throw their advantage that they've now found. Okay. Ace backing off a little bit, trying to heal up the team. Blue team haven't captured middle yet. And yeah, red now have all of their players back. The warrior immediately rotating to far. This guy is definitely, uh, you know, he, he goes far every game, no matter what. I like that. That's definitely a standard warrior main play. Now, all nodes essentially just kind of sitting there doing nothing as the warrior is going to neutralize. Of course, this does mean that blue are kind of very heavily outnumbering the red team here. And... Red team playing insanely greedy. They're like, you know what? We can actually hold this team fight 3v5 while we actually cap sides. Definitely an ambitious moment here for the red team. And they're they're kind of getting a bit punished for it, I think, here. The question is, is it going to matter enough? They probably aren't going to lose middle. The warrior is in position to contest. So I guess this has kind of worked out pretty okay. They might be getting a return kill onto Stellan here. Skog X looking to find that hunt as much as he possibly can. It's still very low. No heal scutching. Yeah, there we go. There's the kill. Yeah, I'm not sure what the plan was there from the blue team, but Skog X should be able to get this kill. Is there a potential for a revival? Is there a steel interrupt here? There actually is. 
Yeah, kind of waiting for it. Looks like the revive will happen, though. Enough blue teams. Oh, and that massive burst there from Garo might just kill Skog X. The revive does come through. Red team do come out ahead of that, though, as they have maintained control of the waterfall. Eventually, we do have the Blade Swarm being eliminated. And that entire exchange did not really work out for Red. Uh, in fact, they're going to now lose the waterfall because of that. Bit of a messy game. Bit of a messy game here. Uh, I think Red's still okay, though. Especially if they can get that revive. That would be an insane res. Oh, what a disgusting revive, actually, um, from the red team. Unfortunately, the blue team, not really in position to deal with that revival from the thief. You've always got to watch thieves, man. You can't trust them, right? Like, the thieves, they're always waiting to get the most disgusting revive you'll ever see. And, well, we actually see that payoff here for our red daredevil. Meanwhile, over here, we have this team fight kind of brewing. And the Reaper being here is communicating to me that Red Team is probably pretty happy about it. Particularly as they also have a Catalyst in the mix and also a Guardian. So I'm pretty sure Blue Team's time here is fairly limited unless they're able to essentially instantly kill the Reaper. That doesn't appear to be happening right now. Uh, Shroud is now available. There'll be a heal skill after Shroud as well. And yeah, the Fear Mark. Oh, hang on. Having said that, the Reaper is getting their heal skill gets interrupted again. That is definitely not what they wanted whatsoever. Uh, but there it does. It does land now. There's a lot of Shroud to get through now. And yeah, the Boon Corruption, the Stun, the CC. Well of Darkness up in a few moments. Should be pretty good. The Thief does die, actually. So having said that, team fight not going as smoothly as the uh, the red team or the blue team would have liked, I suppose. They do get their Revival. Their Core Guardian now taking heavy pressure. They can simply disengage here, but they're actually going to fail to do so. Wow, good fight there by blue, actually. They are actually able to kind of defy the odds there and successfully win the game. Or successfully win the team fight at the very least. However, I do hate to be a bit of a Debbie Downer here, but uh, I've got to look at the time, guys. Uh, the time is six minutes left on the clock, so a very slow matchup here. Uh, neither team really owning a lot of the map for any significant amount of time. And that does mean that blue team have got to figure out how to get some points pretty quickly. Otherwise, they are, they're doomed, right? They're completely screwed because right now they're 150 points behind. And that's actually quite a lot in a game that this slow. A very slow matchup. Things are not happening very quickly. And as long as red can just keep something ticking away, like a node or even two, then, I mean, at the end of the day, the timer will dictate the victory. Okay, Ace going for the revive does get it. The Herald trying to wriggle away. And this is the this is a slightly different build, I think, that we saw. Um, it's going to be Salvation and Corruption. So very, very tanky there, using that Unyielding Devotion for even more damage reduction. Herald, of course, and Corruption for some big DPS. Here we go. Yeah, blue team. Definitely on the back foot in this fight and end up do falling. Had to burn a revive cordon very early. Garo the Thief also going down state here too. Dexter's getting that stomp. There is that. And I think red team picking up that second node. They have cemented their control over this game. Now, Blade Swarm planted down on, on the, the waterfall as well. Bit of a weird middle there. I think red team... Uh, not quite executing as well as they would like to, right? A little bit of overconfidence, perhaps. A little bit of overextensions. And a lot of greed from the red team. But now they've got these two nodes. They've got their catalyst on middle. They have everyone else here on the waterfall. I think we should be seeing a red team victory pretty soon. They should be going forwards to the semifinals very, very soon. Oof. Man, the burst there. Look at that, guys. That is some big damage. What is this thief build? It is the Critical Strikes build. Trickery, Critical Strikes, and Daredevil. And yeah, also utilizing this Impairing Daggers. This, I think Syndrona started playing with this, didn't he? Um, if you combo this with all of your Thief mobility, you can have an absolutely disgusting burst, right? That was kind of like a backstab Impairing Daggers wombo combo. Some very, very heavy damage. Of course, Critical Strikes really bringing some extreme DPS here. Like all of these traits making the Thief do a massive amount of damage output. And well, yeah, then the Impairing Daggers... Finishes off here, and the Assassin Signet as well. That's actually annihilating the Catalyst. Holy shit. So yeah, 540 bonus power, and Critical Strikes, and Impairing Daggers. So a huge amount of damage, but as you can see, quite uh, squishy, right? Not a lot of extreme stealth application. Not a lot of uh, good escape tools or defensives. And as a result of that, certainly quite a vulnerable build uh, if it is actually targeted and if it is hunted down. So the Thief does go down there, unable to actually get the kill on the Catalyst. And yeah, at this point, Red Team, they know that as long as they don't completely troll, they're going to win the game. Uh, if they just, you know, they should just hold on to the middle node. The middle node right now is their friend. To be honest, if they really wanted to be boring, they could just AFK on mid until the game ends. That would definitely be an option. But yeah, this is going to be the end. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. Let's see. Do we have... Ooh, Enigma versus Mamayas. That is fun. That's going to be a big one. Let's get in there. Okay. 
And the game has started. This could be a fun one. This is a big, big game. So we've got on the blue team. It's going to be Enigma, Fly, Zeon, Demolish, and Rip. And it's going to be the double Chrono. Ooh, it's Power Chrono from Rip as well, actually. Huge DPS. And Zeon gets one tapped, actually. Again, now we do have that combo. We have Fly, um, Rip, and Zeon with some insane damage output. Uh, again, it's a Critical Strikes Thief, as you can see here, with a few more defensives uh, than the previous Thief, but still a Critical Strikes Thief. Zeon on the Untamed, and then Rip on a Power Chrono. So we have massive damage. Uh, from our blue team here and they might be trying just to break through you know They know that the the red team is playing a somewhat slow composition slow and steady a grind style competition um, or Composition rather so they're just gonna say you know what we're just gonna have so much damage You can't handle it and it appears to be working so far as the tempest gets obliterated by the burst damage here from the team, and Zealith is- oh my god, wow, blue team is farming the red team currently. Can the ultimate Dark Worm survive? The barrier from Nimbus Cloak is looking good, but actually, there's no mobility, bear that in mind, there's no real disengage from the Herald. The, the heal skill got interrupted there as too, and ultimate Dark Worm is getting shut down. Wow. Blue team. With a super aggressive strategy here, just completely throwing the red team off. And it's going to be a Berserker from Goku, by the way. And this is not even a troll pick, by the way, gamers. Berserker is one of those builds that has been seeing some experimentation a little bit. Uh, this condition Berserker build. Um, it's a bit of a... I'm not sure exactly if it's, it's the, the best warrior build to play right now, but it is a build you can play. Right now. There we go. Here we go, and that's a kill on Goku, and I really think our red team is in trouble already. They're going to have to change something up a little bit. Rip, of course, is definitely um, a vulnerability in the blue team. Very squishy. Quite easy to lock down, but of course does have some sword defensives. Has distortion, has shield, and blink. So far, it's actually a triple cap in favor of blue team, and that's looking very tasty here for them. In fact, this might, look, this might be looking to be an extremely clean win. Okay, let's see if this team fight can be won by the red team, but they're a player down. This is a 5v4, and we have that double chrono. The chrono here is going to be so powerful, not only the damage one, but also the support. Well, kind of the semi-support chrono. It's a very big presence. Rip is getting focused, but again, the support is solid here from the Guardian Revive available. Looks like blue team may be thinking about playing it safe. Backing off, I do like that. Don't overextend, and actually the Guardian is potentially exposed here. Doesn't have a uh, renewed focus, in fact. And again, that Herald is very scary to the core guard. It just melts through. Uh, Guardian cannot deal with Herald whatsoever. The amount of sustained colonies it puts out is simply too much for the core guard. But actually, it's going to be Azaz who overextends. In fact, we do have the blink into the glyph there to guarantee that revival there from Amaya's. But again, that's a resource that has now been burned. Enigma, though, not out of the woods yet. It's getting some very good peel from the team, though. Zeon and Rip doing a great job. And now there's no revival available for the red team. Bear that in mind. So any kill that comes through is very likely to be secured. No renewed focus for a good chunk of time, though, for Enigma. So that is important. But, you know, by the time it's necessary, it might be available. Ah, uh, Rip wa did get caught there a little bit, though. There is a revive, but I don't think it will actually happen in time. Yeah, there's no way that will happen in time. Oh, Enigma might be falling here as well. Gets a blink to get away. But the pain train is here. Yep, too much, I think. Gets the heal skill, no renewed for a while. Does have alacrity, which is going to help a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be enough. No, it is not. And red team get their revenge in this next sequence. And blue, they just got to get out now. They got to disengage. Okay, it's going to be Goku versus Zeon here for the 1v1. All right, the big French comeback here, guys. Can it happen? Berserker existing. Okay, there's the big knockback. Here we go. And red team being driven away currently. As is its build, is this build. It's Invocation, Corruption, Hell. We've seen the Salvation variant too, but this is a slightly more aggressive version, I guess. A bit more damage with the uh, Song of the Mists. Rapid Flow for a bit of sustain. And of course, Glaring Resolve for kind of the avoiding getting stunned. Pretty interesting trait, actually. You get stability when you stun break. Okay, here we go. Now let's see what happens here. The fight is now stacking up. And again, we really saw the value of the Herald in that last fight. Really burning through that Guardian. And just having that continuous, very sticky pressure. Can stick on its targets pretty well. It has this chill application that can be very annoying. And of course, remove all those boons. However, we must say that Blue Team still very much in the driving seat here. If they can win another fight, they can certainly cement their victory and get into a very good position. Rip getting pulled in. 
Oh, and that is scary. Not much stability available right now for the Guardian. There is the res. Here it goes, but the CC denies it. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. Maybe the first fight was a bit of a blip, actually. The French fighting back hard. This might even be a die on node situation here for uh, Enigma. No, looks like we'll attempt to get away. Should be able to do so, actually. There's nothing chasing. Oh, here's the, uh, the rev, though. Ports back in there. Gets a bit of a juke. But really needs some help to hold on here. This is going to be very painful. Fly is here. That's some very nice stealth. That might allow the disengage. Looks like it is going to allow that disengage. But the triple cap has now been established by the French. They get a really clean fight there, not losing any of their own players and killing a lot and shoving everyone away from the nodes, fighting away from those points while the thief was capping everything. Buffs are going to be coming up here. Nimbus Cloak getting the shield. Sword will be secured though, actually, which is very scary for the blue team's combat, you guys. A lot of damage here. So that sword buff is going to massively increase that even further. Here comes Zeon going for a big burst onto Goku. Support good from the Tempest. And let's see who is going to be the target. Looks like Zealoth is going to be the target here. Blot gets nuked. Getting stomped out, but the revive is there from the Catalyst. Oh, the Tempest. Okay. Here we go. Now trying to find Rip again. Getting rid of that Chronomancer is absolutely pivotal here. Can they make it happen? Ooh, the damage is vicious on both sides. Zeal is going to get finished off there by the sword, I think. Yeah, there it is. That's the end of that. And blue team starting to maybe get back into this. Or get back into their, the driving seat of this game, at least. Can they find anything else? The ultimate Dark Worm kiting around. Isn't a 1v2? Ooh, surely that will be the end. Can't get up to the good kiting spot there. Manages to get to the one and gets the leap into the escape, maybe. Does have a block in two seconds. Can that land resistance, denying the immobilizer a little bit there? Pretty high value. And gets to the Tempest. Is able to hold off quite nicely. Red team creeping their way back here. Blue pick up a no, but of course, Zealith off respawn will be able to pick up a second for red. That will again get red team winning this game slowly but surely. Looks like this team fight is fairly static on middle, at least for now. Nimbus Cloak looking for the target. And yeah, Rip. Poor old Rip is going to get absolutely bullied this matchup now that the Worms have kind of identified what's going on in this game. However, the burst on the Tempest is absolutely huge. Uh, rebound is being used. That should trigger in a few months. Oh no, it ran out. And that was a 2k burn there. So much damage output. And the Tempest does fall for the red team. Can Blue get any more? Of course, they actually are going to be able to force away Zealoth as they have a 1v2 here. That's, of course, completely acceptable now. They are able to get a kill on middle. There's no outnumber on the map anywhere. And Red Team lose that node. More kills coming through. Actually, the, the, the Tempest hasn't died yet. The Tempest has not died. Fly wriggling away. I'm doing some big work on Thief in this matchup, actually. A lot of kills. A lot of hunting down, right? Really big stuff here from Fly. Been a big part of all the kills that uh, Blue Team have secured. Ooh, and he's actually looking for that Spectre as well. Oh, massive crits coming through from the Spectre. Can Fly actually get this kill? Will be a big one. There's the Gravity Well. It's being denied here. Ultimate Dark Worm kind of getting bullied a little bit here on middle by the Guardian and the Chronomancer. Here comes the Chrono for the hunt. Ooh, there's the Gravity Well. This could be a big moment here. Where's the, is the Rev going to go down? Gets the heal. Where is the Tempest? The Tempest is nearby, actually. Oh, that block combined with that Spectre Barrier, really big sustain. Of course, Rabid Amulet being used, I believe. Um, so very high toughness as well. Heavy armor and high toughness, very hard to break through. Oh, but the health bars are looking very, very spooky for the red team. And Goku has to get out. Has to run away, cannot engage the Chrono Monster, unfortunately. And blue team just continuously advancing their points. I think they should be going to the finals. There's the second node. I imagine it's going to be Draza in the finals, right? Uh, versus Gizmo Robbery. I can't imagine. Well, I mean, I, I shouldn't say that. It's. Uh, I would say it's definitely a very favored matchup towards Draza's team, of course. But we'll see. Oh, yeah. And Blue got both buffs there. That is a catastrophe for Red. Uh, with both buffs, it's going to be almost impossible for Red to actually take this fight now. I don't see a possibility of a good engage at this stage. Any fight is going to go badly. Those buffs giving so much buffs. 20% um, more damage, a free stomp, free revive as well, and 20% more health. That's going to be a little bit difficult to overcome, especially in such a tight game with such tight fights already. I think that will probably actually be the end of the game. This final kill is going to come through onto Goku. Is there a revive available? There actually is not. It was already used. And I think blue team are probably going to clean up this team fight. And I think blue team 
will then win the game. They actually are outnumbered right now as one of their players. Uh, I think it's Fly is actually capping right now. But despite that, they are still able to actually secure that kill. Keeping it an even 4v4 here on the middle node. Ending it on a triple cap there as well. 400 points in the pocket for Blue. This is the end. It's going to be Team Enigma Fly Zeon Demolish Rip in the finals. Facing Draza's team for the monthly automated tournament championship. Massive gameplay, massive wins. It's going to be a fun final. It's going to be a fun, fun final, guys. Prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves. I don't really think Red can come back. Mamaya's bleeding out here. In a mm, kind of reservable position, to be honest. Zealoth may be going for it, but yeah, Rip is on patrol. Rip knows what's going on. Won't let any shenanigans happen over here. I shouldn't think so. And Yep. It's nearly over. Okay. Red team do have the sides. But I think it's kind of prolonging the inevitable at this stage. 40 points to go. Demolish. Looks at the middle node. He's proud of this middle node. Worked hard for this middle node. Wants to hold it until the end of the game. And will probably do so. Because he's on Chronomancer. Enigma also showing up too. Alongside Rip. And those have to hold this 3v3 until the match ends from the points here. It's getting a little bit scary on timer as well. Even if this does go completely pear-shaped, I think Blue Team would simply be able to stall out the game long enough for them to win on the timer, even if things go terribly. But I actually don't think that's even necessarily going to be the case, as the Chrono Monster and the Guardian are here. So a lot of sustain, a lot of annoyance. Fly now shows up as well. 19 points, 18 points to go. And I think the grand bunkering begins. Yeah, Blue Team is going to fully bunker down middle. They know what they've got to do. And this, this could be potentially a scary moment, I'm not going to lie. Like, the, the team fight comp from Red is powerful. If Red Team can win a team fight, then there's definitely a universe where maybe they get a massive triple cap, but I simply don't think they have enough time to do this. The wells are still available here for Demolish. The cooldowns are still pretty decent here for the Guardian. Yeah, goes in, gives the stability, gets the big heal, and 496 points. Red Team really going for it, but I do not believe there's any way for them to neutralize this node in time, particularly with Fly being super annoying on the map. Demolish goes down, but the game is over. 500 and the finals begin next. Here we go. Oh, this game is actually still going on. The Gizmo Robbery game is actually underway. But, oh, yeah. Uh, definitely a very favorable matchup, actually. So this one uh, started quite late. But, yeah, very much a favorable match uh, in favor of the blue team. And the Draza team, it's, uh, it's going to be a clean one. This is probably going to go to uh, basically a 500-0 game. As this is no ordinary team game. As this is a very powerful roster of... Elite gamers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We won. Indeed, the other game is finished. Yes. Demolish is going to the finals. Will Demolish win two monthly ATs in a row? Of course, Demolish. Feedman member. Yeah. Yeah. Demolish likes the treeing emote a little bit too much, in my opinion. That's all I've got to say. He, he, you know, he's, he enjoys it too much. He's gone too far. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only good emote, man. I've been saying it. Well, I mean, it's definitely a, a solid emote. I'm not going to deny that. It's definitely not bad. I love treeing. Well, I guess you guys do uh, seem to enjoy that emote a fair bit. I can't deprive you. I can't deny you that. I think you, uh, you know, you deserve to enjoy the emote. I'm not going to, you know, I will not deny you. Okay. All right. 300 points. Red team is trying. I respect that. Getting some practice in. They're trying to make some of these matchups work. Trying to find a way to get some victories on the board. Get some points set up. But it's not really working out, to be honest. But, you know, this is one of the things about Guild Wars 2 PvP, really. And the <sighs> Games can end up like this, pretty one-sided. But it can, be, it can be a lot of small things that add up to a game like this. Right? Like, this does not necessarily mean... That these two rosters are universes apart. I would definitely say that the blue team is significantly stronger, right? And is definitely the more powerful roster. Uh, however, 
a lot of the time, matches can very quickly slide out of control. Uh, just because of the nature of Guild Wars 2 PvP. Like, it, you know, once a team is in the lead and knows how to control a game, and, and that's what Blue Team is obviously going to be good at. They're going to be good at controlling the game, understanding how to hold on to their win condition. It can be very difficult, even if you're only a little bit worse than your opponent, to actually get back into it. Because if they grab onto that victory, you're never going to detach them, right? You're never going to detach them. And yeah, very clean victory hit. And I think this, well, we'll see what composition we actually see used, of course. We've seen a few different variants. Some Scrapper mixed in there, some Tempest. We see the Catalyst variant with Misha there. Also Condi Herald mixed in by Misha as well at some point. So here we go. We'll see what they actually go with in the Grand Finals of the ATB. Yeah, I'm afraid for the Gizmo Robbers, they will not be successfully executing their robbery today. Mm. Catalyst still very strong, very, very strong. Yup. And you guys know why, right? CMC is an elementalist main. Grouch is an elementalist main. Guild Wars 2 is owned and operated by, by elementalist mains. Seriously. Yeah. All right, here we go then. It's going to be the Grand Finals, Draza versus Enigma. Yeah. Yes. Every CMCW in the chat buffs Catalyst. Every CMC Gar in the chat nerfs Catalyst. Yes. Here we go. We're moving on next. Yeah. Check DMs, I beg you. Oh, Temple. All right. Temple of the Silent Storm. Definitely an interesting map to end this on. This is certainly one where anything can happen. Okay, let's see what these teams are actually going to play. It is going to be Draza on Scrapper. Frey on the Catalyst. Maya on Thief. Ah, it's going to be Supportless. Yeah, it looks like a Supportless build, actually. Um, from the blue team, and that does make sense. If this is a, this is definitely a map where, especially in the current meta, you might not necessarily see a lot of team fights brewing up, which is where, of course, you really get that value from the support. It's going to be a lot of skirmishing, a lot of high mobility required, and supports obviously are typically quite slow. They aren't able to rotate quite as quickly as a lot of the other builds that exist in the meta right now. Oh, but then again, maybe Misha is going to go for the Guardian. Okay. Here we go. Support is in the mix. It is actually going to be the illegal relog. Well, not the illegal relog, but a relog at the last second from Misha. Breaking out the support guardian. And still one untamed here from Wolf Spider. And on the red team, it's going to be this. It's going to be double chrono. Rip still on power. And honestly, this is actually going to be fun. Like, this, I think on paper, blue team is definitely a little bit stronger. However, I will say this. The red team have a bit of a wild card comp. Uh, there is definitely a universe where they can completely catch their opponents off guard and bamboozle them with the set they've got. It's a lot of damage. Uh, if blue team gets too greedy or doesn't respect that damage, it can be incredibly scary. Yeah, Misha expecting a push. You can see on the Guardian hanging back a little bit before proceeding onto the map. And let's see if we can see any of that massive DPS actually connect here from the red team. What's the target going to be? They're going to go for the Scrapper. They get the Scrapper immediately. Misha is actually not in position because he was playing quite defensively. So that kill immediately gets killed. And yeah, red team, I think, kind of counterplayed the opener they thought their opponents were going to do. They knew that they were very likely going to play that third and go for that push. So they just countered that immediately by just smashing that player. But now they have got to get a bit more done there. The respawn's already come through. So even though Draza did die... The red team didn't necessarily get that much out of that, right? The engineer is already back in play, ready for some big DPS. Shoves away the thief, maybe expecting a decap, then sees the thief actually go towards middle. We actually now have, of course, the blue thief wriggling away. Got a plus into the untamed, 1v1ing each other. Zeon and Wolf Spider engage in an epic duel of fates here. Both thieves kind of chasing each other around the map. Very classic situation, but it's going to be a little bit too late, unfortunately, for Fly. Fly. Not in the mix here. And he's going to have to pretty much completely abandon that. Maybe go for a decap himself to try to compensate for what just happened there on middle. Meanwhile, teamfight pretty slow and steady here. Demolish maybe about to get nuked here. 
However, it does have a shield block up quite nicely. Goes for a gravity wall. I'm not sure they really have the damage to actually kill anything here, though, unfortunately. Uh, they have rip. But again, that's only one damage deal. There's a lot of DPS, though, with both Frey and Draza. So I definitely think blue team rotating a little bit better so far, actually. Getting some slightly better fights and being in the right place at the right time. Definitely the aggressor. And in general, the aggressive team, I think, usually has a bit of an edge. And yeah, they're now getting ahead in the game a little bit. But red team did manage to actually get the altar. Flo was able to get that. But yeah, the problem is with the guardian support in general, you can be a little bit slow. And even though, you know, Enigma was holding on there, can't really get away from a lot of these builds. It's simply not going to happen. Zeon ready to 1v1 into the wolf spider again. However, the thief is also in play. So Zeon not committing to the node too much. Rip is now in play. There's actually not a lot of mobility for the thief. The thief is in a bit of a spooky situation. Yeah, no heal skill. Does now have the blink. And of course, uh, Misha is available to get the job done here. Pushes the Guardian away alongside the Chronomancer. Everything neutral as of right now. Let's see, Dimash going to be pushing into the Catalyst. Frey simply going to say, how about no? Especially seeing as um, the Thief is lurking about the place. Now, let's see. Red Team's target is going to be over here by the looks of that. Looks like they want to see if they can get rid of the Guardian and the Untamed. Is that going to happen? Rip and Zeon are here. There's a lot of damage for Red here. They're going to give up middle and see if they can find this kill over here. Can they do that, though? That's the big question. Wolf Spider now in play, and of course we have the reinforcement from Frey now getting into the mix. A lot of pressure on the Untamed, some solid kiting though, of course, super speed being used to disengage. However, the chase from Fly is actually pretty big. Can Juvenile Mess hold on? Gets the heal skill, still has Protect Me as well for some Barry, and of course a stun break if necessary. Red team though, get themselves this node. We have Demolish actually trying to hold this 1v1 into the... Um, into the Scrapper, actually does a good job of it. Could this be a kill? Draza will actually be repelled here. All oh, the nades can be scary out of stealth, though. Can Dimash hold on? Dimash trying to get this win here. Should be able to hold on. Trying to go for a laser beam on the Draza. Doesn't manage to quite land it. There's some good kind of by Draza on the other side of that. Zeon is down, actually. This uh, 3v3. Or well, this kind of scuffle not really going the way of red team. Demolish still holding this 1v1, of course. Does manage to kind of annoy the Scrap here, and keeping the Scrapper out of the fight is going to remove some damage from the map, but those nades, kind of hard to deal with there, particularly on that kiting spot. Uh, Grenade Barrage was blocked there, though. A good reaction from Demolish getting the job done there. Has to distort and nearly loses the node. Here comes Fly. This could be a potential kill onto Draza. There is a gravity well available. Ooh, but hang on. Maya also moves into play, too. Yeah, and that's really scary for Demolish. He's got to be careful here. Gravwell's trying to uh, save Fly here. Succeeds in doing so. Maybe no... The nades. Oh, man. Those nades from the scrapper. Managed to find the thief kill. Very close game so far, though. And buffs are about to come up. That's when things can get weird. Ooh, Misha gets the first buff for free, though. Of course, a slightly uh, unfortuitous kill on Fly does reduce the map presence of red team significantly here. Ooh, and yeah, Rip is going to get completely wrecked here. Yeah, couldn't get out, unfortunately. Had a blink, but... I think couldn't quite get the line of sight to actually use that. Was trying to get uh, a bit of a refresh on the shadows there to try and hold them, but was not able to do so. Meanwhile, Enigma trying to get the bait. Tries to bait the opponent, but oh no. Is going to end up falling. Uh, the blue team, they're not going to be fooled by that. And ugh, That is very painful. A double cap combined with stillness. Really gaining a lot of points in favor of the blue team. Incredibly uncomfortable stuff. Incredibly annoying for red. Because they certainly don't want to be falling behind in a game like this. But yeah, stillness really accelerating the game a lot. Demolish makes it back over here, but they're both very low. That's so scary. Whenever the Scrapper is around, particularly, the, and the Thief too, Fly and Demolish are not comfortable um, engaging in this without some cooldowns. Yeah, especially with the Spectre. The Spectre can also just provide this really strong support capacity as well, right? It can just apply all of that barrier and really make these 2v2s very nice. So it's the design vision of Spectre, guys, right? You know, you've got that support element onto it. Support Thief, right? And Dimash gets picked off, went back in, didn't see the Thief potentially, and ends up getting punished for that. And blue team, they are doing well. That's all I can really say. They are doing a good job. And red team, the onus is on them. They must find a way. Right now, it is not a close match. It was a close match. Can red team make it close again? That is the question. See if they can connect this big DPS. I definitely think a lot of it was down to the opener. I think red team uh, opened very well. Ah, oh, the core guard with no renewed focus. Some very good focus. The focus fire, actually, from our blue team has been absolutely spectacular. The entire tournament, actually, doing a very good job of connecting the scrapper and 
of course, the catalyst at the same time and the, the untamed. There's some very good focus fire from all of these teams. Fly trying to get a kill on Wolf Spider would be very nice, but oh no, the buffs get picked off again. Bread team just not able to control this map, and now they're kind of crumbling here a little bit. Oh, this is a bit of a tragic game for Red, unfortunately. Just they're dying at the wrong times, or well, the other way you could look at it is that Blue team are very aware, and they're getting kills exactly at these very opportune moments to allow them to get these objectives and then snowball their advantage even further into the game. Draza is in trouble. Oh, and gets the Slick Shoes and actually finds the kill onto Demolish. Slick Shoes a very scary ability to deal with, and Draza finding that kill. Yeah, I mean... We're kind of getting to the end here, I think, at this stage. We do have Rip trying to stall the bottom buff here, uh, but I don't think he really has much opportunity to actually get it. It, will be a, it could be a big 1v1 win uh, here onto Frey. Maybe if he lands a big gravity well into a burst, but I think that is somewhat unlikely. There is no stun break available right now um, for Frey, but again, yeah, Catalyst just has significantly more sustain. Uh, than the Chrono Mods here, so not really where Rip wants to be 1v1. I don't think he can really, realistically actually get this kill. Misha comes down just to reinforce it, predicting maybe there was going to be a plus one. Red team going for a bit of a Hail Mary. Uh, play at some stage. Ooh, yeah, and Frey actually just gets the kill there. Of course, that's going to force out the revive here as well uh, from the Guardian. But that's just not a resource that wants to be used here whatsoever. And yeah, the 2v2 will continue, but... It's kind of not a particularly good 2v2, to be perfectly honest with you, for the red team. They did manage to get a node, and they have Demolish positioned again on the altar. But again, it's seven minutes left. They're 200 points behind. They're going to really have to do something magical if they want to win this game. It needs to be magic. It really, really does. Yeah, rip. He just can't survive it. This is a problem. You know, that Chronomancer is definitely a, a, a good build. It's not a bad build by any stretch of the imagination. And rip is an excellent player, but it's just getting bullied, right? There are a lot of things right now that are just bullying that Chronomancer. It's not being allowed to activate. It's not being allowed to unchain. Uh, Demolish actually having difficulty uh, versus the Chrono 1v1. Looks like he actually is going to get that kill alongside Fly. That's a nice kill onto Draza. Maybe this allows the Thief to be a little bit free to maybe make something happen on the map. But again, 400 to 200. It's a very well-fought game here by our red team. I think their days are a little bit numbered. Oh, come on. They need to kill. Honestly, um, I think the Spectre has been extremely valuable uh, in this matchup, actually. Just being very annoying. And the kind of a very durable damage dealers that the blue team have, this Catalyst and the Scrap are so annoying to actually get rid of. Particularly when you kind of blend them together with the support and, of course, the Spectre as well. A very durable composition that uh, is allowing the blue team to kind of outlast and survive the burst damage and the rotations uh, from red. And I think that's going to be the final set of kills that are going to lock this game in as we have Fly and Z on full with Wolf Spider picking up the, uh, the Temple over here. And then he'll be able to rotate towards middle or simply pick up the buff, if so desired. Yep, yeah, Maya going to get the buff. That's going to double the points up. Quadruple cap in favor of blue, I think. And yep, the interrupt couldn't come through from Zeon. There's no potential to decapture these nodes, really, by the end of the game. And that is going to be that. That is going to be the monthly automated tournament over. And some new winners, I believe Maya and Wolf Spider, have actually not accomplished victory so far. And now... Well, there it is. Now they have accomplished victory so far in the monthly. The stomp comes through onto Zeon. 493, 495, and the game is over. Good game, well played. And that's the end of that. But a very intense game at the beginning. But uh, we saw Blue Team able to wrestle control back kind of halfway through uh, and then take the game for themselves. And of course, take the entire tournament for themselves. That is the end of the Chalice Gizmo. Nice.